Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Nerdy Up North podcast. It's a nerdy podcast and it's hosted by Northern Nerds. I am one of your hosts, Sam. And I'm the other host, Paul. And normally we would be saying we're live, but we're not this we're week. Not. No. So, yes. So, everyone in the chat who's talking away, sorry, we don't know what you're saying about uh, this week. Yeah. <laughs> we're not but yes. <laughs> but yes, we are joined by very two very special guests, and we've been trying to get these guests on the podcast for quite a while now. But they are very busy, and like I say, if you are part of the Northeast and you're part of the, the nerdy community, you've probably seen these two faces around. Probably is not, like I say, in this type of makeup or in this light, because <laughs> normally they're a bit dressed up. Yes, we have got Curry and Mike from the Gig Asylum. So thank you for joining us, guys. Thank you, so, thank you very much for having us. Thanks for having us. Yes. So when we always do get a new guest on the podcast, uh, we always like to throw them on the bus a little bit and... Just get you to tell us a little bit about yourselves and <laughs> say what you do <laughs> and um, like say, oh, give us your nerdy credentials, shall we say? Oh, <laughs> your geeky first. credentials. Oh, thrown under uh, the bus. Oh, the geek, Twice. sorry, the geek credentials, sorry. So, because I, I did like it when someone posted in, uh, in the group the other day, is this a crossover episode? So, yes, that made us laugh. <laughs> <laughs> when the geeks and nerds collide. <laughs> so. Where do I start? So, uh, I'm Mike. Hi. Hi, Mike. I've been, I've been a geek for my entire life, I would say. I grew up with Star Wars when I was seven. Mm -hmm. New Hope came out when I was seven. Just, I just turned, no, I was six, 77. Oh, oh my God. He's got <laughs> yeah, I was six when it came out. It's, it's, it's quite nice me and Sam being the young ones, the four ones this way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I literally, I must have been, I must have got my mum and dad to take the pictures about 30 times to see it. Wow. Um, and I've been watching films mm -hmm. pretty much constantly. Yes. Got into horror when I was about eight or nine because so, BBC, two, BBC mm -hmm. two Mind, mm -hmm. six o'clock on a Tuesday night, had a monster movie season on. Right. And some of the films they had on were Valley of the Guanji, mm -hmm. Mighty oh. Joe Young, the original right. King Kong, they had a black and white version, mind. Mm -hmm. And they had Frankenstein on. Right, the, yeah. The original Universal film. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been a fan ever since of horror. Mm -hmm. And then me Nana Lera's watch Alien when I was far too young when it was on ITV. <laughs> <laughs> about There's always one. On <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, I've been pretty much watching horror ever since, and I've been collecting comics for donkey's years, playing Ooh. video games since the Spectrum. Spectrum, Amazing. yes. I was the Amstrad was my <laughs> first one. <laughs> Spectrum, <laughs> Spectrum 48K with a rubber keyboard. Can I just say, though, can you can you still hear the tapes playing in the sleep, the noise, the, the, like, yes. the loading screens of the, the nightmares oh, that will never gets, go away? It's, it's when it gets 99% loaded in, then it crashes. <laughs> Dizzy Egg used to be a bastard for that. Dizzy Egg used to <laughs> like used to expect it to load, and I used to get all the way up the screen, then it just fried. Yeah, bastard. But the, the, always remember, eight and a half on the volume control on the tape deck would load ninety percent of the games in, right. except Manic Miner and Jeff Set Willie had to be on ten. Oh. I think he's just fallen into the vortex. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny enough, yeah. The worst thing uh, is, well, I actually know what he means, though. That's the thing they've been watching. I'm just, I'm just sitting smiling. You're going to have like a ticker tape along the bottom of this, explaining this to, to you. <laughs> this was technology of the eighties. <laughs> still massive gamer. Still, mm -hmm. still read comics. Still watch films. Still watch TV. Oh. I think it's changed with me. What comics are you collecting at the moment? Uh, I don't collect comics anymore. Mm -hmm. I collected the Marvel collections that came out. You know, the mm -hmm. hardbacks that came out. I've yeah. got all of them. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. got them. All 200 <laughs> of them. Right. I don't even want to imagine how much I spent on them constantly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've got that full collection. Yeah. All in the attic, as you usually are, with the rest of my comics. Mm-hmm. No. Then we get the house done up, and then they all come out on the wall. Certainly, I, I've got a few around my walls. Uh, the only ones I'm collecting at the moment is the the re, reprints for the Walking Dead, the deluxe, where they're doing them in color instead of the black and white. 
Um, I am wanting to get to the 100 uh, issue just so I can see Glenn get his head split open in full colour instead of the black and white issue. So th that is my uh, little goal at the moment. But it's, I think I'm on it. It's a grim goal. <laughs> it's, everyone's got to have the, have the needs and the wants in life. It's really but what more do you want? <laughs> yes. That's true. I <laughs> said that was grim. <laughs> just to see it in colour. <laughs> yeah. Well, we saw it in the TV version. But That's like true. Said, I think the, the comic did it better, though. But yeah. Um, Absolutely. So, Kerry, tell us a little bit about yourself now. Um, so, I'm Kerry. I am one of the admins of Geek Asylum. I'm married to this tall drink of water here. Um, we've been together this many years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> my thing is, my nerdy thing is Red Dwarf. I mean, you mm -hmm. cut my arms off, I bleed be a milkshake. It's as simple as Amazing. that, you know. I'm annoying mm -hmm. to watch it with because I'll quote it from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Um, it all started with me, Auntie, who watched the first episode and she told us about it. And then with we had a stand and date every week. I would go to her house yeah. and watch it. Um, thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, mm -hmm. been to many of the conventions, met many of the cast and the crew, mm -hmm. seen the models and things like that. So that's like my ultimate mm -hmm. nerdy nerdy thing that I've had since I was a kid. Um. Before that, huge, huge Ray Harryhausen fan. Um, mm -hmm. We were in junior school at the time, and it was the end of term, which is topical because it is at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and we were given a, a film to watch, and it happened to be Clash of the Titans, so it would be wow. 1981, 1982. Mm -hmm. We got to watch that. No, it would have been 82, 83. We got mm -hmm. to watch that, and I was just enthralled from, mm -hmm. from there and then when um my nana showed us uh she was like oh watch this sinbad film yeah <laughs> that was that my was first it, you know? yeah that was my introduction was it was it the eye of the tiger not the eye of the tiger or something like that but it was sinbad and the what was the one sinbad where the, the, the tiger, minute all the cinema to see all right back in the day <laughs> 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 Wait. but we then there was of course it was jason and the argonauts um mm. We've got, uh, I've got two daughters, we've got two grandkids and they're like mm. already getting into nerdy stuff, so nerdy culture and things like that. So we've got one who's a massive football fan, but he's a huge Doctor Who fan and he loves mm. Harry House and movies massive and things. Massive gamer. And both of them are gamers. Both are gamers. Yeah. Um, can we come to your house play Lego games? It's, it's <laughs> Logan, there's Logan's catchphrase at the yeah, minute. Can we play Lego three games, Granddad? Three-year-old's obsessed with Four. the Lego games. Four-year-old is now obsessed with Lego games. That's right. all he talks about. Mm. Um, but cosplay wise, um, I've cosplayed a few characters, I've done many baddies. Mm. Um, Ursula, <laughs> bit, I'm a mm. big lass, so I thought, you know, I, I, you can cosplay whatever mm. you like, doesn't matter your body shape. But mm. personally, for me, I wanted to do a bigger mm. character. Um, and somebody suggested Ursula, um, mm. um, got a hold of a friend, Gwyneth, who I'd met through cosplay. Mm. Um, she helped make it. Mm. Um, I made tea because that's where <laughs> my talents begin and end. Um, yeah. I've basically got hooves for hands. The minute, the minute ideas, they touch my, anything crafty, they just kind of crumble. My my favourite story about cosplaying, creating cosplaying, was Curry's other cosplayer that she's quite famous for, which is Annie Wilkes. Yes, mm. I've seen you yes. many uh, times as Annie Wilkes. Make, making the Annie Wilkes costume, she was asked to sew a button on. The two lasses that were helping make in the costume had to remove and re reattach the button because it was wrong. What you don't <laughs> understand, though, is this simple button wasn't even in a real buttonhole. It was just for show. Right. Yeah, okay. It's not even a real button. It so you could have basically glued it on or stuck it on. It didn't really matter. So yeah. <laughs> but I saw them on had one a straight line, apparently. And <laughs> no, no, that wasn't happening, so that had to be taken off. Because I used to joke, oh, I can't even sew a button on me. Turns out I can't oh, sew no. a button on. <laughs> no. But say another, because it's funny enough you're saying that anyway, because I think before I knew about you, I, I, I saw the meme. Because you actually became a meme for a little bit, where they've done the Annie Wilkes with a Tinder picture, wasn't it? I made that Tinder one. Yeah, yeah. That went <laughs> yeah, I made that one just for funsies. I, I had it all written out, and I sent it to, um, mm -hmm. it was Dan Burgess, who's a photographer. Mm -hmm. I just wrote and says, can anybody like turn this into a meme? Um, and, he, and he made the Tinder page for us. And it was just funny. <laughs> and I put it on and then somebody went, oh, you're on the Stephen King group. And I'm like, oh, am I? <laughs> 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 I've done it so many times. And it's like, it's my meme. What you're <laughs> I love, I love, I love, I love it. I love being tagged in. But it's just, 
I don't know. Sometimes you get bored sitting on an eight time and he's taking over the telly with the game, so you just make stuff up. I don't know. No, so, yeah, <laughs> that, that's pretty much how, like I say, we started with our little project here. Is basically like with lockdown, everything was just mm. bad. You couldn't do anything. And, and I'll be honest, I just wanted to talk to people about the Goonies. That literally is how it we started both things. And, and Sam came up with the idea of doing the podcast because uh, I wanted to write. Because uh, I didn't want to be on the screen. I hate being screen. I hate being talking to people because I don't like people. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, <laughs> so, but, um, but basically, I wanted to write articles and put articles on a website. But Sam was like, no, no, nobody's doing that anymore. We'll have to do a podcast. So we did the first episode. We, got <laughs> we, did, a, we did the first episode. We got and then record. did it again. <laughs> So, so yeah, so we did the full episode and oh. went, oh, let's let's check to see what the video works. No video. I was good. All right, then. Um, so I had to pretend like we we're doing all our top five favorite movies. Oh, really? That's a really great pick. Oh, my then, God. Uh, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's funny. The amount of podcasts I've listened to where that's happened in oh. that is very, very common. Mm-hmm. It's the one and only time it ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> we were so meticulous after that. Like, is it, is it recording? <laughs> but it's it, as you go, it's learn as you go what you do how to do it and stuff because we yeah. didn't have a fucking clue we still don't have a fucking clue we're just basically winging it as we go now like i said the podcast is getting out there it's, it's meeting people it's it's starting to exactly get, it's got get you must be doing something right i mean you got know legs. everybody got knows legs. about the new podcast everybody knows about it so yeah we'll just get everyone to listen to it that would be the difference <laughs> <laughs> Well, the reason I know about it is because people are listening to it. So, ah, good. I know. Like, oh, good. It's always interesting though because you mentioned a few names there as well. Because Gwen, she's actually been on the podcast mm-hmm. with uh, the Be More Geek, and um, she was lovely last. Um, but we did actually do. We should have like if we'd known if you're such a big Red Dwarf fan because we did actually do a Red Dwarf episode a few months back. We did. Uh, it was one of my favorites because Red Dwarf is one of my things, mm-hmm. and I have met when we had Graham. Our Graham on, and I <laughs> didn't stop laughing from the very start to the very end. I think it's the I, I, the one point I was in pain, like mm-hmm. my stomach was hurting. It was such mm-hmm. a good episode. I would revisit Red Dwarf with you in a heartbeat. <laughs> oh, prepare so, to be annoyed because I will quote it from start to finish. Oh, we'll just leave. We'll just leave it. That's when, a <laughs> when you're talking about laughing. Yeah. My obnoxious cackle can be heard on a couple of episodes because I was lucky enough to go and see them filmed live. Oh, wow, oh, that's amazing. amazing. So if you yeah. watch back Crisis, which is one <laughs> from the newer series, watch the uh-huh. episode Crisis and you just get it. <laughs> that would be, be me. That's me sitting next to Gwyneth trying to stuff my fist in my mouth to not be loud. <laughs> but saying that, though, when we did the Big Bang episode as well, Goodwill oh, God, had yeah. a claim to fame. His laughing is on one of the Big Bang Theory episodes as oh, well. Right. So that, when that, nobody that was... else is laughing, you can just hear your goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like there's a small skinny lad from um from Borough just uh, having a like dodgy laugh and it was it was uh, but now every time you listen to that episode you can't not I miss can't it. Not. I have to I I'll go to and wait. And there it is. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> but the things what we like to do about the podcast as well, when we think about like a subject matter, when we've done the red cro- red dwarf, we don't really do much research. We just like go why they were special, why things so we don't proclaim to be experts oh, in the field. No, God, no. But what was so fun was like revisiting and reliving. Like I was saying something, then Sam was going, that's a memory unlocked in her head. Then Graham was something. <laughs> and it was just bringing back so many good memories. And that that's what I love when you talk to people who know the shit and like say are interested as well. But that that's what like either being a nerd or being a geek is all about. It's basically sharing that passion and just basically embracing it as well, though, as well. Because I think as as Mike said, he's been a geek all his life. But like when we were younger and stuff like that, it wasn't always cool. It wasn't always easy to be a nerd or be a geek. So it, it's it's great that like say more people has been able to embrace that side of it now. There's so, also a pumpkin and metal, and that doesn't help either. <laughs> Very true. That's me. That's me. I went from being this tomboy action figure loving like non girly girl to then just being an utter goth. <laughs> and she's and been I a still haven't, ever since. I still haven't quite getting out of it. <laughs> See, that's uh, like with me, I'm either head to toe in black or I'm mm-hmm. a full rainbow. There's no in between. Absolutely mm-hmm. no in I've between. I've tried. 
I've <laughs> literally, I have tried to do colour and it just does not it does not work for me. <laughs> the thing is, I, I won't do sort of colour as in, oh, let's all wear pink today or, you know, no, on Wednesdays no. we wear pink. Don't do oh, that. Oh, I was just going to say um, that. <laughs> I'm literally talking. I'll have a rainbow dress that I'll wear <laughs> with me rainbow fishnets and me rainbow regular choices. <laughs> and my hair currently is rainbow. rainbow. Three, don't. <laughs> but your hair is currently rainbow as well. <laughs> so it is either complete annoying in your face gaudy colour or just mm-hmm. black. Two in between. <laughs> but that's the thing. Uh, I'd rather have that because at least you know where you stand rather like the indecisiveness, indecisive, the indecisive, indecisive, so, if I can say it there. You, uh, oh, <laughs> I, I can never get words out. Uh, that's, that's uh, like the stutter always kicks in at sometimes as well. So that's fine. Um, good. But for anyone who's listening as well, if they've been living on a rock or don't know about what you do, if you want to tell us a bit about like the Geek Asylum and like what you've involved in, because I know you do a lot of charity work as well. Um, like I said, but what is the Geek Asylum, if, if, if people don't know? Well, the Geek Asylum is a Facebook community. We, it used to be just a Facebook group um, mm. where a few people would get together and it sort of expanded and expanded the more people that we, we like got to meet. It was like six people originally. Mm-hmm. Um, and it expanded and expanded and expanded. Um, you know, every every convention we it was like, oh, right, can we, wait, can we talk to you? I was like, oh, well, you know, join mm. this group. You know, it's a little mm. close group. And I was asked to be an admin at 99 members because it was getting a bit big. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're standing at over 32,500 at the minute, wow. I think. I think I was in the 300. Um, mm. So it's not the biggest. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the big numbers. It's, this, it's the second biggest sort of multi-genre nerd group, geek mm-hmm. group so mm-hmm. far. In the but UK. What I'll say is it's the friendliest. Mm-hmm. Um, we pride ourselves on uh, celebrating your fandoms. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we want to hear about what you enjoy rather than, oh, I hate this about it. You know, if yeah. you're going to mm-hmm. dislike something about it, tell us what you, what you like about it. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, I wasn't too keen on this bit, but this bit still kept me interested. You mm-hmm. know, have a dialogue like that. Something yeah. we'll have a good blanket ban on and we seem to do quite well is a no spoilers rule. Mm-hmm. Some people go, how do you do that with no spoilers? And it's it's difficult to explain, but it's so much easier than you think mm-hmm. to be, because we've got a generation coming up now who don't know who Luke's father is. Mm-hmm. We've got a generation, you know, God, that yeah. haven't seen the mm-hmm. films that haven't seen. So we have kind of a blanket ban mm-hmm. on any sort of, big spoilers like that mm-hmm. um but it is still possible to have a conversation about film and yeah. tv and things like that without spoiling it for people mm-hmm. and yeah. the amount of times you'll go oh well you know i'm watching this now i don't want any spoilers but can somebody tell me that and they'll take it to a private conversation yep. and then mm-hmm. that way you find that there are so many we've had friendships made we've mm-hmm. had relationships we've even seen marriages come yeah. out of oh, people that have met through oh the group. wow um and it's just because rather than just being a facebook group it's it's an actual living breathing community now yeah mm-hmm. and people arrange meets at different conventions because yeah. of people that they know there we have like t-shirts we've got even little mm-hmm. daft id cards done through blue <laughs> cyborg bless them um they do uh it's, you know so even like when we had um when we had to go out wearing masks we had like hashtag mm-hmm. one of us which is our, our little <laughs> motto um mm-hmm. you know rather than putting like the geek asylum on a on a face yeah. mask and their face yeah. being a billboard we, we thought that mm-hmm. was a bit tacky mm-hmm. so we thought you know we'll just have something subtle in this little yeah. one of us on the side just seemed to work um so that's mainly what the Geek Asylum as a Facebook side on the social media side of stuff is about. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also people sharing tips and tricks on how to do cosplay. Mm-hmm. We have a side group because we didn't, we noticed other groups were like, um, the people would be selling things. So it would just be mm-hmm. a load of things, like a load of selling pages. So we're like, right, we don't want people selling things. We don't want people just coming in, dropping their link and going away. Yeah. We do have facilities for that. You know, we've made a little mm-hmm. sort of, um, chats for that so if you want to advertise mm. the podcast you go to the podcast thread mm-hmm. stick your link in there you want to do your instagram mm. thread stick it in there but people just coming in and dropping links isn't what we're about so we've got a separate mm-hmm. selling group as well mm-hmm. because we've got trader friends that come in there that we see from convention to convention we've got people that do private sales we've got people that are downsizing collections or changing collections all together mm-hmm. so we've got the geek asylum selling emporium as well for yeah. absolutely any businesses, any private sales and things like that. A lot of mm-hmm. the traders put discounts in there as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's cool. Specifically mm-hmm. for us, which is class. Yeah, oh, that's there, are, there yeah. are some traders that if you yeah. if you quote like mm-hmm. a Geek Asylum, um, particular Geek Asylum um, code, you will mm-hmm. get some uh, a little bit of discount. It might only yeah. be 5 or 10%, but it's better. It's still, better still better than a slap in the face. It's still so, yeah. something, exactly. <laughs> um, 
But going, uh, taking it outside of uh, Facebook, one of the original members, Chris, uh, said, mm-hmm. "What well, you know, we've got these numbers, what can we do? Mm-hmm. And we went, well, why don't we try running like a little tombola or something for charity? Mm-hmm. But we'll ask the organiser who they would like that be, like mm-hmm. who they would like to, mm-hmm. to raise money for. So we got together and we decided, like, we went out to the, we had some like bits and bobs that we had in the mm-hmm. house that we could, that were good enough as prizes. Everybody mm-hmm. went and had a look in the house, but we also put a shout out for traders if anybody would like to donate anything. Mm-hmm. And we were inundated. The generosity was unreal. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. just people going, yeah, you know, have like these 10 pop figures, you know, and sometimes at the end of them, um, I think it was Capital Sci Fi, we just got this box. Mm-hmm. Of just stuff that they had left at the end, and there was drinks cups in there. There was um, there was rubber ducks that were like Aquaman. Remember that? Oh, um, right. Southampton. Yes, yeah, Southampton. Oh we my went, god! We, yeah, mm-hmm. we got like there was stuff. a convention at Southampton. We got we used to go to, um, mm-hmm. it's, and it's no longer going. But yeah. We went a couple of t- we went once as punders, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then the year after we were invited down just to come down because we'd made a lot of friends down there. Yeah. Um, and the next year when we went down. One of the trailers went, oh, I've got something for you. Have you got, have you got much stuff in your car? And I mm-hmm. said, we're just out bags. And he went, oh, well, come out with and I'll put this in your car. And he literally gave us a full As a car boot. It was a pallet <laughs> full of stuff. Wow. Right. Wow. He, 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 oh, it was he, like he, de, 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 de. <laughs> <laughs> the best game of Jenga ever. <laughs> yeah. How we ran his shop was mm-hmm. he used to buy the um, returns pallets from Amazon. Right, and he'd go in and he'd literally buy a pallet for like thirty quid. Yeah, It'd be a pallet full of mugs that had been damaged. Mm-hmm. And when they say damaged, the corner of the box was a, a, a form, yeah. would have knocked one of the boxes and mm-hmm. bent it beside the box, and they've had to just clear it all out in case one of them was broke inside. Right, okay. So they'd sell it for mm-hmm. pennies, right. and he'd it's take made a <laughs> and he'd <laughs> take them all out. He'd take them all out the boxes, and mm-hmm. any that weren't damaged. He'd sell for like three quid a piece. Right. And he'd make his money back in no time. And he says all the stuff we got was just excess stuff mm-hmm. that he had. Yeah. And he mm-hmm. literally, there was loads. Yeah, but the generosity across like over the last, God, we've been going like nine years come mm. September. But the generosity, oh, I would yeah. say over like say the last seven years since we've been taking it out um, on a different conventions, mm-hmm. we must have raised tens of thousands. That's amazing. That's amazing. Though, but, that's amazing. But, but that's always been. That a... I was just going to say, with like, say, when it comes to nerds and like, say, people like, or, or gigs and stuff like that, or people who go to these conventions, you always find that they always look after their own, and they are yeah. the most generous people as well because they understand yeah. like what's going on and like, it's not all always about money. So it's great that like you're finding yeah. people being like that as well, though, with yourselves. Yeah, they are. They are fantastic. I mean, we've got one running even in the group at the minute mm-hmm. where we've got five prizes. Um, mm-hmm. of signed Nick Frost merchandise that we got done at um, Comic-Con Northeast. Right. Um, and that's all going to a charity called our Milo. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Milo, I've seen that one, yeah. He's a, yeah, he's a really poorly little lad, but he wasn't supposed to survive two hours. We've just celebrated his 11th birthday this year. Oh, yeah. bless him. Um, oh. He's, um, he was sent home on palliative care in December and they hadn't expected mm-hmm. him to make his birthday, which was in June. Right. Um, and he did. So they had mm-hmm. a massive birthday party for him at the Parks Leisure Centre where they raised a lot of money as well. But the legacy yeah that they're trying to leave behind is that mm. they have a family there's they have their like other children as well they've mm-hmm. never managed to go on holiday yeah and when they go when they have to go on holiday it's like a whole operation when they have to go and even then when they get there if it's an adapted caravan mm-hmm. it's not fit for purpose because milo mm-hmm. can't reach up and use a grab rail yeah. and that you know the, the wheelchair he got can't be turned around Mm-hmm. So what they're looking for is they're looking to raise eighty thousand pound to build a fully adapted caravan so families like theirs can go mm-hmm. on holiday together. Yeah, you know. Awesome. Um, mm-hmm. So that's what we're raising money for at the minute. So it's a five-year ticket if anyone wants to try. Well, what um, I was going to suggest as well, if you like, after this, if you send us a message with the links on and stuff, I'll put it in the description for the podcast Please. when we put it up on Tuesday. Oh, so we'll Thank put you all. So, much. Really so appreciate like, that. so if anyone's watching on Sunday, the links are below. So look to click You're on the there. links down, down there. there. They're not there yet, but they will be there yeah. on Sunday. Um, you will be happy phone ready to do it. <laughs> well, that's the thing, though, because like we are very much about sharing and trying like to be supportive. Like when we wanted to do the podcast, like when we start getting guests on and like talking about Google, we wanted it to 
focus, like fair enough, we'll get other people that on as well. But we wanted to focus on the northeast and showcase people who are doing stuff like in our region because we aren't we are overlooked a lot of the times when it comes to certain things. People always think, or oh, um, like social media or uh, doing certain things, it's all based down south. And that's, mm-hmm. as you said, that's where the idea of, like, I was name come up as well, like, nerdy up north. Like, we are fucking nerdy up here. Don't forget about us. Uh, yeah, I'm we're here. Hello. As a poor cousin. That's yes. Yeah. Like. But definitely. But, like, showcasing, we are up there with, like, some of them. And, like, especially with, like, the growing industry in the northeast as well, like, with what culture being up here as well, which is, like, yes. say, massive. Um, for, like, I'm a big fan of what culture. I'm I am. Um, yes. I have massive issues with what culture horror. horror. <laughs> we'll get into that later. That's yeah. a whole other podcast. I'm just that's, saying. That's a, that's a rant coming that. <laughs> oh, we do like a rant. Sam went on one for about half an hour about Game of Thrones one time. It was hilarious. But yeah, it was meant to be. We did our top five favorite TV programs, and I managed to get incredibly angry over Game of Thrones, which is one of my favorite. I, I, I even have my own Game of Thrones group, um, which has got some big numbers. I just never go in it, um, but. <laughs> Yeah, I managed to go on a massive tirade about the the downfall of Game of Thrones, but yet it's still my favourite. And I was just okay, like, so you like it, there, but that's fine. <laughs> but yes, um, so because you mentioned about the conventions as well, because you do do a lot of conventions. I know what we were talking before you we went live. Like, so how many? Like again, just random numbers. How many conventions have you got planned for this year? Oh, I thought you were going to ask how many of you have done. I was like, oh, no, oh, oh, I don't, I don't, no, 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 I'm not that mean. Not that mean, yeah. We've, yeah. we've cut down. We have cut down. Last, <laughs> I think two years, just before COVID hit, we mm. did 28 in a year. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah, so that's at least, a, I mean, we do, um, at least, there's definitely at least one a month. Um, mm. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes, you know. Um, how, do you, how do you tolerate and seeing people that much? Oh, that just, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I'm a social butterfly and he oh, drives no. me there. <laughs> Luckily, my shift work keeps me away from some. Yes. No, yeah. The thing is, I've, I've just recently passed me driving test as well. You could go, mate. Right. Oh, well um, well but I still won't drive out my local town. Right. I'm too, scared. I'm too much of a scaredy cat right now. But um, I did go from my house to South Shields, which is at least a 10 minute drive. So well, you know, no, it's getting, getting there. Further. It's just getting further. little by little. It's like so you're just yeah. pushing the boundary. Uh, just think, every trip you're going, you might get to Newcastle. You never know. Oh, you about. never want to drive to Newcastle. It's a nightmare. Oh, uh, I, I, I've been driving for many, many, many moons, and I still won't drive to Newcastle. But when I passed my test, I just thought, "Fuck it," got on the car and drove to York. Can I just and say the first, the first journey I made when I passed my test was to Newcastle to see a bond. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you what band it was. It was Hell Bastard. Hell Bastard. Wow. No, they don't go in. They're not. They're not. They don't exist anymore. No. Right. I was going to say. I'm not, it was I don't supposed don't... to be. Um, Venom was supposed to be headlining, and Hell Bastard right. was support, and Venom mm-hmm. cancelled. Right. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, a fair few conventions, as you were asking. We've got a fair few conventions. <laughs> See how I carry. She tries to keep it on track, like me. Like these other people just go off on tangents, but yeah, like. <laughs> Me. No, we, we, uh, we've got a fair few plans. Um, we've got a, mm-hmm. we're, we're at Comic Con Manchester next week. Yeah, next um, week, which is brilliant. We've mm-hmm. got um, York Wales. Then, um, because I'm, I'm, I'm helping run the cosplay for um, mm-hmm. Manchester and um, Wales. Mm-hmm. So I've never ever been to Wales. I'm quite looking forward. To it. All right, I have been to Wales um, myself. And then it's just a case of um, wherever we're asked to go from there. I mean, we've got uh, some of them we can't make. I mean, we've got a fantastic one in Huddersfield this weekend, uh, Huddersfield Comic Con. Can't make it. Just just mm-hmm. can't get there um, because I'm working. Because sometimes yeah. this adult in life gets in the way. Yeah. That and is, the, we've got that to is very make true. money for this, this expensive hobby we've yeah. found. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't very it much. shit when that happens? <laughs> But yes, because I know, like it. we, because we were meant to do well. We were meant to go to, like, say, Love and Horror last year, but like, oh, say, yeah. unfor- unfortunate circumstance happened, so we couldn't go. It was but, my fault. Uh, it wasn't go. your fault at all. There was nobody's <laughs> well, fault. I had bad news the day before, and I just we couldn't go, and I felt so so bad. But we are going this year. Come hell mm-hmm. or high water, we are. Going. Yeah. I go apart from last year. I go. All the time, I, I love it. It's my best friend's um, an artist, and she's usually a guest at conventions. So mm-hmm. I do 
I do stuff with her and this is the one where it's like we she doesn't have to work this is like mm-hmm. our thing and we can just go and be a part of it and I fucking same. love it <laughs> same for the love of horror is is ours it's our mm-hmm. one that it's one of the few that we get to just go to mm-hmm. and enjoy um you know, I mean, even if we're not working one, we tend to, we tend to go to them anyway, just mm. because. Um, but yeah. for the love of horror, is is a one that we just we Cause, attend. Yes, because I wanted to talk about the love of horror as well, because that was quite a big one. You did cause an, uh, an internet sensation with that one, didn't you? Would you like to tell us like uh, what happened on that one there? We did. Well, he was there. <laughs> he, he was, he was there. there. So was he. <laughs> yeah, Kevin was as well, actually, yeah. He was upstairs, garden the cake. So 2021, um, we got married at For the Love of Horror on mm-hmm. the 16th of October. So I get to brag to people that Tim Curry was at my wedding. <laughs> Very much was. Yes. <laughs> and so was I. <laughs> and so was you. I was in the crowd. I stood and watched and it was it was your dress was phenomenal. It, was, like, it could be seen from space, taken. basically, yes. <laughs> Uh, that's what I last thought. I went, I need to be seen from space. That dress yeah. gave me nightmares. <laughs> oh, wow. That is good news. I, to hear. <laughs> I couldn't put my feet anywhere. Right. That dress was so long, that train. I, mm. I'm not joking. I had to. I was so careful where to stand in ah. case I stood on it. See, that's an issue, oh. not an issue me. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I love that. I, I felt like a goth queen mm. in that mm. dress. You so, were. Um, Everything. Got the dress, was fab, loved it. My friend Tiffany did the, because um, we I had a bit of what, we call, what I call a twat tan, mm-hmm. um, because I'd, I had a line of tan here, and I'm like, I can't right. do that. So we bought some just, like, beaded chokers. They went on, mm-hmm. just sort of disguised that a little bit. We are really talented um, <laughs> So we've got that. Um, my friend, um, your other friend, Jamie Lee Boo, uh, she's mm-hmm. based in Whitley Bay. Um, I took a load of basically 99 pence Halloween decorations mm-hmm. and went I need a crown <laughs> okay. and if you've ever seen the House of Boo stuff mm-hmm. she the is, stuff is phenomenal. insanely mm-hmm. talented and she needs a slap mm-hmm. for it if I'm perfectly honest um, but I looked at it and I went this is my budget and it's mm-hmm. not massive Mm-hmm. And this is what I have. Can you suggest anything? And she got massively carried away. Going, oh, we can do this. We can do that. And I was just like, wow. right, go on then. That sounds fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the crown, like I say, mm-hmm. came from ninety nine pence decoration. That is amazing. Of, into the hands of Jamie Leibu, and she just she created mm-hmm. that. that. Wow. Yeah, Absolutely. The, the scary thing about that crown is not only is it a ninety nine pence bump by your butt, mm-hmm. stuck on top of a head, took on top of a head a headband. But it's got a piece of stained glass off a, a burned down church. A burned down church. How much more right? goth is that? That that is the <laughs> ultimate goth. It's like it's right re- there. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's like hold on. Mm-hmm. Whoa, wait, wait, what? Mm-hmm. But the paint, the paint job. She didn't. Paint it, job. it looks. Mm-hmm. It looks perfect. Mm, it, oh, it, it was yeah. perfect. It was amazing. So and how did it come had... about though? Like like did it was something that you planned for a while, or was it just well, like? Know, like it was um it was a live, it was a for the love of horror live um mm-hmm. that we did from Captain Jack's Protcha, uh, Love mm-hmm. Coppin, mm-hmm. um who made the the wedding arch that we got married under. Mm-hmm. He, he, he also him. did um he did Chucky's chair. Yeah, he did a he lot did of props. The saw prop. Right. He's done um Freddie's boiler room, yeah, he's, he's done he's mm-hmm. insanely Michael Myers' well. mm-hmm. set. He's done loads of different sets for, for the love of horror and horror. He's done for like a lot of different Mm-hmm. Different conventions he does props mm-hmm. for. They right. are amazing. Halloween doors, one of the favorite yeah. ones. So oh we... yes, the door. Sorry, yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> <That's not laughs> us. Um, so we got. Uh, we were doing a, 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 a for the love of horror live there mm. um, with Ben Fenlon, who, by the mm. way, got ordained so he could marry us. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and Neil, and, Neil, um, mm. and then they were doing. You know, they were doing mm. what they were doing. Um, I was dressed as Annie. You dressed up that day. No, no, you weren't dressed as well. But mm. the, so the um, and Loz was dressed up as Loz in England, mm-hmm. <laughs> as you do. <laughs> um, and we were just sitting, sort of in between takes, and going right, okay. Um, you know what? Well, what's crap? Says, oh well, we'd love to get married. You know, this is this is the mm. vision, and, and we're talking, and they went, we'll do it, right? And I went, what? And Neil went, we'll do it. Oh. 
hang on, I'll just check it with Andy first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the guy that owns Monopoly. Yeah, yeah we'll check yeah. with him first to see if he's already doing yeah. his event. But he was like, mm-hmm. sort on it straight. He was like, no, we'll do it. Mm-hmm. Um, we had an answer within half an hour. We did. Yeah, yeah, it was it was class. And uh, Emma, um, Emma Cleek. Oh my God, bless that woman. Bless that woman. She was going right. Okay, you can have this, and you can have that, and you can do that, and you can do that. Right, come down, sort out the space, and they were just they couldn't have done enough. They right, could not have done enough. I owe them a debt I can never repay. They oh, were bless. phenomenal. They gave us the day of our dreams. It was just brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Even down to Megan, um, we had our own cocktail menu. Right. <laughs> um, and and the, the done all that. I've still kept like all the bits and pieces and stuff as mm. things. Um, we had um, all of our tables because the upstairs in the bowlers arena is all done like mm. the Star Wars cantina. Yeah, so cantina. It was, just, it was fab there anyway. Um, we had all the tape rather than having table one, table two. We had um, a company make some acrylic um, signs. And mm. all the, everybody had a special wristband who was at the wedding party, and right. they were assigned a table, and it was either the Tim Capello table, or it mm-hmm. was the Pet Cemetery table, Man. or it was the, <laughs> the Jaws, Jaws table. table. Oh, so good. they had all of those out, um, and it was just, it was just fab. It was it was just the best time ever. It really was. Yeah. The best it is time. one of the probably the best stories you could tell as well. A good because oh, uh-huh. but normally people say like, the one day was the best day, but like I say when it's at like a horror convention, Tim Curry was there. Wasn't Tim C- Capello? Tim Capello came on stage. And played, played. He, yes, no, he did. Because I sat. Yeah. I, I, I know he came on stage. I, honestly, it's just like just a get like. I didn't know being he was there. It. <laughs> it was amazing. Because Ben stood forward and he went like went like ladies and gentlemen. And I thought he was going to go, Mister and Mrs. Kell, do something cheesy mm. like that. Uh-huh. And he went, Mister Tim Capello, and I lost my shit. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Lost my absolute shit. I was like, "You were kidding!" So he come out, said a lot of said a lot of stuff, um, and then he went off. Oh, we're like, "Oh, that's lush!" And then we stood for photos, and then um, Emma, Emma, mm-hmm. Cleek, she'd seen him come off scene. She went, "Well, get on there and give them a load of sacks." <laughs> <laughs> so she sent Tim back on, and that's when he came out and played. And that's there's a photo, and he's just over my shoulder, and I'm, I just noticed him. I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck's happening today? <laughs> well, yeah, so that was uh, that's class. memorable. See, it's, mm-hmm. see, it's memorable. Oh, mm-hmm. and then, of course, I, had, I hadn't got round to the bit about me, me cake and me flowers. I don't mm-hmm. know if you saw the pictures of the cake, but the cake was four foot tall. Um, Fucking hell. Wow. Was there, like, was there a dead years. stripper in there or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> it was 40 years. 40 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and our friend, Maid of Honor, she'd done the uh, clay, she'd done all of the... Mm-hmm. Um, the cake, she'd done all the flowers, she did mm-hmm. all the buttonholes, things like that. She's just annoying, another annoying <laughs> talented girl. Old, old flower and cake company. Old flower and cake company, if anybody wants to. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, it tasted fantastic. It was ab- but the yeah. way she'd done it, like, so we talked about the colour scheme, and then, but what she'd done is she printed, she got printed scenes from each mm-hmm. film for each guest that was it for the love of horror as well. Right. Um, and as oh, a that's topper. So special. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then as a topper, we've got we've still got that as well. Uh, it was done by a lad called uh, Ski Arkham Asylum. Mm-hmm. He makes a load of fantastic like sculptures and things like that. And he sculpted Mike as Captain Spaulding mm-hmm. kneeling down with a gun behind his back. Um, That's one of his work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's got uh, kneeling down and holding Annie Will's hand, and she's got a. <laughs> but we're oh stood on top of a track but every time he was thinking about something he's going do you mind if I do this I'm like you've got free rain on it yeah kind of know the two figures we need to do just do something with them and we're, we're stood on a trap door and there's blood going right. into the trap door oh very cool that was so... my cake topper oh my god so the and question I is now married is... on Halloween was cool mm. <laughs> so the question is now because like I said because Mike's put himself in a, in a proper worse position how are you going to top this now so yeah. like <laughs> Nope, he peaked. He, he peaked. was like, she's nope, contractually obliged to be with us at this point. I, I don't have <laughs> yeah, to do I'm anything done. now. And I'll be honest, no, that was my idea. <laughs> so, let's say that though, in five years' time, we'll say, oh, let's renew our vows. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, so that's no. not on the table. Absolutely, fucking not, mate. No, no way. Not <laughs> These people that want to redo their wedding 20 odd down the line are good looking. Oh. Good looking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one and done. Nah. That's it. Nah. <laughs> stress beyond stress. No way. I mean, you Absolutely did decide to get married not. at a convention, so you added the extra stress. Mm-hmm. But honestly, it was 
you looked amazing the pair of years it was so beautiful i have never had dress envy in my i got married in 2019 and i i got married all in black 50 style mm. black dress and fabulous. no yours was fabulous <laughs> <Mine> was <okay. laughs> no my daughter's wearing 50 style dresses for his bridesmaids mm. i'll tell you a funny story though um and she'll kill us for telling you <laughs> so i have two my two daughters were my bridesmaids Mm-hmm. And they came out first and they gave Mike a cuddle and they went and stood at the side of the stage. My youngest daughter, Amy, had got absolutely bladdered the night before <laughs> and had been up till four o'clock in the morning sitting drinking with some of our wedding guests mm-hmm. and was still half cut when she got there. <laughs> And then the BFEA kicked in as she walked up the stages, up the stages, oh, <laughs> and gosh. she was not a well woman. Oh, and she stood her. next to our Alex, and Alex is going, are you all right? She's going, I'm going to puke. She went, don't, you'll go viral. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst thing to think about. Like, not that she's going to be sick and spoil the wedding. It's like, it should become a viral video, <laughs> and that should be a meme on the internet, and she spoke exactly. the convention. Oh, she'll be on oh, one of those, yeah. um, like, say, the Channel 4 things, what happens at a convention, what, something like yeah. that. <laughs> I just, I wish I could have felt sorry for her, but I just couldn't. Mm. I was like, one, it was self-inflicted, and if that had gone viral, I would have been the biggest laugh. I would have had the biggest laugh at our expense. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, wow. so I know that. Me, like, um, sorry, mm. my nephew was a hobbit as well that brought the rings in, so oh. you need to have a hobbit bring you rings oh, in your yeah. life. Yes, you do. That's but amazing. he handed off the rings to the well, grandson, who was best man. <gasps> oh, oh my like God. I'm kind of like wanting to do mine all over again now and make some changes. <laughs> oh, I'll, 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 I'll kidnap Ant. I'll, I'll, I'll save Ant from that. Ant doesn't need to put up with that shit. Bless him. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. So I know, like I said, that's probably going to be your, your biggest memory or like the best experience at a con. But other than that, what was, what's was what been like the highlights of I've been at a, at a convention like that you've done in the past. Well, um, I feel I'm going to come out of this looking like an idiot, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I know where you're going with your with mine. Mm-hmm. Well, do you, do you want to say? Because you say them better than me. <laughs> I was just going to say red. I'm sorry to start with this me- domestic here. So <laughs> I've enjoyed my red dwarf conventions because I, I used to go to them, and then I, I ended up being part of the red dwarf fan club. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've worked one of them. That was interesting to see from your side. Mm-hmm. Um, stood talking for about 45 minutes with Gordon Kennedy about a, a really little known horror film called The Borderlands. Right, okay. Because he was a. Uh, he was main in it. He was, mm-hmm. He's the main character in The Borderlands, and mm-hmm. his producer. Find it, it's brilliant. His mm-hmm. producer didn't think anybody had even watched it, and I actually took it for him to sign. I'm sure the producer had somebody watched it. <laughs> and I'll, I'll say it now it's a brilliant film. It's an awesome mm. film. It really oh, is. Wow. Um, like a hidden gem. His day. <laughs> very, very, very good uh, found footage British horror film. Uh, I cool. love found footage. Speaking What's of British called? horror, <laughs> dog, uh, dog Soldiers reunion uh, for mm. the love of horror last year. Yeah, last year. that was great. That um, was a long so time sorry. coming. <laughs> <laughs> Sat in the naughty corner with them for a while. Yeah. Oh dear, what did naughty corner? It what was did you so do? Funny. Oh, it was just funny because we <laughs> you've got you've got um, um you got a spoon. Mm-hmm. I've got to get an autograph of Spoon. And mm-hmm. he says, What do you want us to draw? And I was like, Claire, Claire piped up next to me. Draw a cock. Draw a bugdoor cock. <laughs> bugdoor cock. And I just said, wow. Yeah, put a bugdoor cock on it. And he went, Really? I went, Yeah, just put a bugdoor cock on it. And he did. <laughs> and oh, did he not? He just went, Oh, I'm going to go wild with this. <laughs> and it went everywhere. He just started to draw on everything he was drawing. We were bad laughing. So Absolutely funny. bad laughing. But Neil Marshall was really nice to meet. Really, yeah, like, it, it, yes, because you've got to get him back oh. for something. We're hoping, 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 hoping that mm-hmm. um, now that the agent who's got Craig Conway has also mm-hmm. got Rona Mitra, so we're hoping Doomsday mm-hmm. Reunion could be on the cards. That'll be interesting. Nice. Interesting. interesting. Reunion. No, I don't. I don't like that film. That's that's a film that, that film? actually makes me the descent. Uh, oh. it actually, it's the only film I can't watch, and like, like I'm not normally the squeamish, but. It makes me it tingle. Just I, I'm very claustrophobic as well, so I have to go behind oh pillows God. and stuff. Yeah. Like. Well, yeah. you've just said you're not normally this squeamish. You are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> well, when it comes to like out in certain <laughs> things, <laughs> um, but when it comes to like scary stuff, but, like say when it comes to blood and guts, but like the descent is not like a blood and guts movie. It's just 
a very mentally laid out, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it's, oh, it's horrible. Though. So, I want the fact it takes forty five minutes before anything happens, and in that forty five minutes, half the audience freak out because of the actual mm. claustrophobia about it. Yeah. But the one that oh. pops up behind, mm-hmm. that's, um, <laughs> that's Craig Conway from <laughs> that Sol in Doomsday. Mm-hmm. So that was him, and nobody mm-hmm. knew he was going to do it apart from him and Neil Marshall. Yeah, all of the lasses that freak out. That's mm-hmm. the actual all of reaction. its actual true. All of that's their true response. It's like yeah. it's like the chest burst scene seen in Alien. Mm-hmm. The, yeah, there was yeah. Only two of them knew it was going to happen, mm-hmm. and nobody else did, and because they got the perfect reaction for just doing it that way. You can't, there's, yeah. there's a few things I've I've been to. Then that was I think it was Dan, brain just kicked in there. <laughs> yeah, I think it was Dan that laid the fact on us about the Goonies. Was basically the the scene was spoiled when. Uh, all the kids were meant to see the pirate ship for the first time, and uh, one of them just went, "Holy shit!" And so they couldn't use the cut. <laughs> so they <laughs> so took it all it. out. <laughs> but yeah, but, it... uh, but no, I, I do like it, like, like stuff like when they do things. Like, I think they did it for Stand by Me as well when they saw the body, the body for the first time as that's well. That's what we were. That's I couldn't think because I, I do mm-hmm. with monsters. I do a lot of facts. Mm-hmm. And and things and I couldn't remember where that me facts were coming from. There, it was stand um, by me. That was it. I couldn't give a fuck about facts. Well, <laughs> I could because you know that's a good story. A good story, exactly. It's it's all about feeling. How you, what had made you feel at that time? That's what's important. Like why are things important to you. So, as you said, like with the cons going forward, um, I've. Like which ones have you got any plans for? Co- like I know you d- said you're running the cosplay in Manchester and um, in Wales. Wales. Are you be doing any like cosplay? Have you, like, I know you've got the like, the two that you said you do. Have you got any like new ones lined up or any special ones thinking about? Totally enough in mm-hmm. uh, where was it Harrogate? Mm-hmm. Harrogate. Um, Annie Wilkes was there on the Saturday, right? And uh, Annie Wilkes was also there on the Sunday. With mm-hmm. Annie Wilkes on Sunday. Wasn't done by Kerry. All right. No. No, there's a fantastic video. There's a fantastic <laughs> video, and I'm walking behind. I'm like, oh, there's somebody here dressed as Annie Wilkes. So I go <laughs> behind him because I'm walking away, and I turn the camera and I go, excuse me, it's just him trying to run. <laughs> 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 you know go to me Instagram and have a look. It's what, funny. I'm going to have to find that now. That, that video was <laughs> just, it went down. All of our mates that were there thought mm. it was hilarious. <laughs> all, of, all of our mates, everybody else just kept looking going, what's he dressed as? <laughs> but all of our mates <laughs> knew who I was and you were curious. Thought yeah. it was absolutely, absolutely hilarious. Trays, everyone but walked through trays all, yeah. just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's my favourite cosplay ever, that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Was well, that like a one and done situation, or are you going to pull oh, it out? Oh, I think that'll come back. That I, think, I think it'll come back. I had a lot of fun with that. And it product. was comfortable. Yeah. It was very breezy. Oh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, so any one these skirts. That's me done. But I'm, I'm thinking I might do the make next time. It might be Spalding wearing on his. <gasps> now that's well, I, 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 I did wear my Captain Spalding t shirt in honor of Mike's cosplay of Captain Spalding. Mm hmm. It's not lost well, on me. That, you that look fantastic. Is one of my favourite ever moments in all the conventions we've been to. Mm-hmm. And it was at the third ever Horrorcon UK. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was the last one that Sid Haig did in this country. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was there dressed mm-hmm. as Miss Bolden. And it was the Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. And he'd come out at about half past eight. Yeah, now, considering it didn't yeah. start till 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. He was out before, well before, in fact, it might have been quarter past eight, he came out, set his table up mm-hmm. on his own, came out, set all his table up, and then um, literally had a walk around it. And as he, he walked up behind me, and I didn't see him walking up behind us. Mm-hmm. And what did he say, Kerry? So Mike stood there in his cosplay, <laughs> <laughs> he walks behind him and he goes, that looks familiar. And in response, Mike says, and I am using the exact pitch, <laughs> oh bless! <laughs> and but before well, that, we got, got the year before. The year before, the year before mm-hmm. we got the next time. That's the next one. I don't want to come out with pretty well off. <laughs> and we were queuing, and we're like they had the they had the um mm. do, they were trying the zigzag queue anyway. So we were like about five rows back. Mm-hmm. And Mike's on the phone to his friend, Red, asking if he's coming down. 
and he's chatting away and you've got um while everybody's getting set up and everybody's getting like queuing up and they're getting like oh well, who wanna say Kane mm-hmm. Hodder's there and Doug Bradley's there. Mm-hmm. So Kane's all set up his stuff and Doug's sent his so well, goes over and he's talking to Doug Bradley. Well, no, Kane was Kane came out in front of the in front yeah, of the table. And, and he stuff. was just mm-hmm. walking down the, the front of the crowd, just talking to people uh, randomly. Because he's mm-hmm. lush. So he gets to, he gets to Doug Bradley, looks over at the mate, looks back and goes, goes, Doug! We've got a Spalding! <laughs> and again in the exact same pitch makes on the phone and goes, hey! <laughs> true, true story. Yeah. My husband, ladies and gents. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I, I do get it because um, I would be no good if I met like like people that I like worship and like do you know what? Meeting them's fine. Mm-hmm. It's when you catch the off guard. Yeah, yeah, when, when you, you catch off guard. Naked, I don't know what to do. And you, you must have met some really fine. like like said what you do in the cons as well. You must have met some amazing ones. And again, I don't know what know about any of the bad ones, but what has been your favorite like people that you've met as well? We've we've made we've got like. Some, we've made real friends with some of them. Lee Gill mm-hmm. is lovely. He's, he's a really good laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, he was in The Joker. Mm-hmm. He was on um, Celebrity, Juice. Celebrity Juice all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a big fr- big mate with uh, Lee Francis, Keith Lemon. Um, mm-hmm. We met him at uh, Huddersfield a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we spent the weekend in Noah. E, that was when me and him were at um, Capital Sci-Fi Con. We'd gone to this meal with the stars afterwards and it was the same night UFC it was on one me and Mike's big MMA fans as well mm-hmm. Mike hadn't gone to this one with his cause I don't um, and <laughs> Lee, um, Lee had set up his phone and mm-hmm. um, we were watching UFC while this raffle's going on right and I mean to, it's for it's for a really good cause for um, Charles. Mm-hmm. for for children's hospices across Scotland mm-hmm. but with Paddy Pimblet's fight the only mm-hmm. fight we're interested in they've got this raffle going on and they're shouting out these names. Well, of course, Paddy wanted me and me and Lee's going, yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, funny enough, when we met them in Huddersfield, that's how we all became friends. Mm-hmm. Because I had a Cain Velasquez t-shirt on at the time. Right. And it turns out that all of the guests there were massive MMA fans. And it was mm-hmm. on that night, so we were watching it on our phones mm-hmm. while we sat in the hotel on mm-hmm. the Saturday night. We are all just sat watching it. Watching the fight and talking to each other about it. <laughs> oh, I love that. best guest interactions. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick Frost was insanely good, right? Because we saw him walking about that there. Benedict you, Wong, yeah, Benedict Sorry. Wong. Well, oh. No, we saw Nick Frost walking around, but we didn't actually get to meet him. Um, because I am a chicken shit and won't they like, go, go up and yeah, talk I'm to him. Yeah, I'm a proper fruity cat too. <laughs> like, I'm I, terrified. Like, he's, he's, he's I thought so it was cute. hilarious. I thought it was hilarious when we bumped into used to. I was like. There them. There's Karen. Like I'm going to say hello. I was like, no, no, I'm not. I'm not. No, I don't even recognise. I don't know who I am. So please, you did. Because <laughs> I am a chicken shit. Sam always laughs as well. Because I come across quite confident, but I am okay. the most antisocial. Like we had a a meet up like like a year ago uh, where we tried to get like all the people to come and sit meet us. I sat in the corner by myself. People were actually coming up and was going, "Are you part of nerdy up north?" I was like, just a bit. Um, but they were like, sit. To be fair, though, most of the people were interested in the girls, like Donna and like other people were like getting all the attention, which I'm happy with. Because, but yeah, I've never been so uncomfortable in my life, so we've never had another one. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, bless you. No, yes. you try and do it again. It it is it is good fun, even if you just take yourself out. You might can go and take yourselves out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your website on your phones. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Um, yeah. So so. Guest interactions. I know you said Nick yes. Frost, but like I say, he, like, he, 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 yeah, he was like say walking around talking to people. I was like that. That was nice. Uh, I loved um, when I saw Charisma Carpenter, like Cordelia, like the way she was yeah. with her fans as well. She was absolutely a darling, really nice. Yeah. Now I remember meeting um, James Masters at the first Newcastle, Newcastle one. one, which we don't talk about, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and he was angry all day like mm-hmm. i was like oh how are you getting on he's like well i'd rather be at home with the kids and i'm like mm-hmm. oh my god okay. <laughs> and i walked away but i come to him but in fact i was sitting next to the stage at uh, the harrogate one at uh, comic-con yorkshire oh, good. Lovely. um mm-hmm. and he me and him just had this wonderful conversation about like just how to take the positives from life and things like that and how he mm-hmm. knows he's only you know he worked hard at his craft yes but it's only by sheer luck he is where he is mm-hmm. and he's a things, massive gamer and he is mm-hmm. a huge gamer like, a huge gamer. 
Garamonte, like, look at Garamonte Games, you've got him there for an hour. Like, <laughs> I didn't realise how much of a gamer he was till uh, he started talking about games specifically, and then he just went. He just went. went. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. and he, kn- he knows his stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big one, big one that we enjoyed, um, Gabriel Luna. Oh, he's right. lovely. Gabriel Luna from Last of Us. Um, mm-hmm. He was Joel's brother in Last of Us. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he was mm-hmm. Ghost Oh, God, Rider he's in, in, he's in Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider that's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, yes, he's, he's in this yes. time. Yes. Is it mm-hmm. this Fubar? He's in Fubar as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he honestly, is one of the nicest people. He I was there for the laugh. He was just there for the laugh. <laughs> he, he just came out from behind his table. He was walking. Every single mm-hmm. person in that training hall got a photograph with him. Mm-hmm. I was, just, he, had, he had pro on packs on, he was having a go. Yeah. He, <laughs> was Anybody that was he was buying stuff at the trade hall. Yeah, all of yeah. the traders, mm-hmm. he bought stuff off every trade, trade just about. Mm-hmm. I don't think he made any money because he no. spent it all in the mm-hmm. trader's room. Um, mm-hmm. he, literally, if you were there dressed as any of the Last of Us characters, he would go over and sit next to you and talk to you for, for, yeah. for about 20 minutes. So I was doing the cosplay for that one as well. Mm-hmm. And this guy comes dre- comes dressed as Tommy onto the stage, mm-hmm. and he comes on with him. Mm-hmm. Right now, this is how much this guy gets it. Right, this is how much this guy gets the small things mm-hmm. matter yeah. to like cosplayers, to fans, things like that. Um, he came on the stage. <laughs> I, I didn't expect it, so I was just like riffing off that. And I'm like, oh well, you know, this is happening. <laughs> um, he comes on, and he took the mic, and he went, "I just want to let you all know, you see that belt he's wearing." screen worn that thing and <laughs> actually taking his belt off and giving it to this lad oh. just to go on the stage and cosplay and that lad will never forget that never yeah. never forget oh, that. i know he still talks about it now <laughs> and, and it's like <laughs> things that he just gets it like the, yeah. the guys that were going around as um a- avp yeah they were going around as uh, the universe for oh, the predator yeah. guys he went oh hang on a second do, 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 do. facetimed arnold schwarzenegger to show them the costume. Have you seen these guys? Well, Steve, uh, Steve Trevor on that one. <laughs> they literally stood dressed up as the soldiers out of Baby P and a predator, mm-hmm. and they're just walking around. And there's Arnold Schwarzenegger FaceTime watching them do it. My mm-hmm. God, my God, my mouth keeps going further and further down. Right. <laughs> but I love stuff like that. I spoke to him afterwards and went, Have you come down yet? He went, No. And I'm not expecting to either. No. <laughs> I would, honestly, I'd be riding that high for the rest of my life. I love it when actors get the the they fandom behind it. Mm. Uh, they understand it and mm. they take it. Not, I don't want to say like seriously, but no. understand why we take it seriously yeah. and don't take the piss out of it. I hate actors who are just like, oh, it's just a paycheck. Mm, okay. No, but, but it I think like, that annoys yeah. me. Uh, but I think the next ones like the want to hear like positive stories about coming from. Hopefully, is um. The supernatural lads like Jensen and and I've heard and, nothing and, bad about them. No, because they're I coming to the UK, aren't they? So yeah, I've, uh, everybody I know that's spoken them, if I any mm. interactions with them, have said they are two of the they all of them. In fact, every mm-hmm. single member of that cast mm-hmm. know exactly what they're there for and how yeah. they got there and why they got there. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what the best interactions I've had is because Doug Bradley. Mm-hmm. Doug Bradley, the first time I met Doug Bradley um, was that year that Kane, Kane was with him. Mm-hmm. And I asked one question at his table. Mm-hmm. Simple question. Just a Are nice signing. Like he's mm-hmm. just signing away. He's signing me. Um, I've got the Hellraiser 1 to 3 box set in the, in mm-hmm. the Lament configuration and he signed the top. Mm-hmm. And, and I just asked him, I says, Oh, I'm a real big fan of your spine chillers books. So Are you bringing any more out? Mm-hmm. That's it. That's all I asked. You only went to your second one. Twenty minutes he was there talking to me about them books. Wow. <laughs> the authors he'd got uh, the rights to. He was mm-hmm. telling me um, who he was bringing in for the next season mm-hmm. of books. He was telling us how he got uh, Robert England, how he got um, mm-hmm. Jeffrey Coombs, and th- what stories they were doing. And I'm still going. I only wanted a yes or no. Yeah, <laughs> but, but we've got this no answer. That's it. Yeah, I'm not I'm allowed still, to meet them. About a thousand people staring daggers at me back, going, mm. Why are oh, you stood talking to Doug Bradley? I want my stuff signed. And I'm like, mm. We're trying to get away, I'm but Doug is not uh-huh. yeah. yeah. if, I'm, if But if I knew that interaction time. was but if I knew if that interaction was going on in front of me, I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. Have your fucking time, because that is amazing. That's I'm it. not allowed to meet him because I keep calling him Doug Jones. No, no, you call Doug Jones Doug Bradley. That's right. Yes. I'm not allowed to meet Doug Jones. Yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, because we were talking about, um, I think, Hellboy <laughs> once. <laughs> I was getting it's slightly different, but yeah, just spent yes. about half an hour saying it. I was just like thinking, I was getting, I'm not going to correct it because I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like, yeah, weird. I did a whole episode Maybe. calling him the wrong name. <laughs> yeah, but it, it happens. But like, that's the it thing happens. where we don't try and profess to know the ins and outs, and like, we are bad with names as well. So that that's always been the issue. Oh, no, terrible, <laughs> terrible. But, I know because you've been to the, all the conventions. Is there anyone that you want to meet that you haven't met yet? Ooh. Um, oh, his name's gone, Brendan. Gleason. Brendan Gleason, right? I want to meet him. I'd love to meet Brendan Gleason. Brendan Gleason, that would be cool. I'd love mm -hmm. to meet him. Um, absolutely loved uh, The Guard. Mm -hmm. One of my favourites. <laughs> favourite films. <laughs> it's so um, good. Exit in Bruges. <laughs> Oh, um, in Bruges is amazing, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but in Bruges, it's in Belgium. Mm -hmm. um, it's <laughs> I heard it's like like a fairy tale. <laughs> oh, it's in Belgium. That, that, we we quote that film so often. That oh, scary. you can't say Bruges at all. It's no, no, it's in Bruges. Uh, it's, like, it's, it's, like, it's like compulsive. It's, it's don't, don't don't talk about the war that's coming. But uh, we're not going to that. Scene. <laughs> uh, so um, I'd love to meet him. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, there was because I wanted to meet Warwick Davis and I ended up meeting him twice Metal, now. Yeah, right. Warwick Davis. Wow. Um, because he's been Metal like everything. Mm -hmm. Annabelle is off here. Three. I love She's her. Class. Absolutely <laughs> love her. Absolutely. The funniest, that was one of the funniest interactions I've ever had with Warwick Davis. Because mm -hmm. we got a tea towel off him. Right. Is covered in his faces and all of his mm -hmm. random lines out of his films. Mm -hmm. And one of his. Um, Stuff. One of these people that he's that he's an agent for was actually mm. there helping him put all his stuff out, and he had this massive argument behind. It and he was just saying, "I tell you, they would sell. We've nearly sold out of them." And I just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> that was it was so um, funny because he was just he was having none of it. This guy was like, "I, I didn't think it would sell," and he's like, "I told you it would sell." Um, but somebody yeah. else I'd like to meet that I'm going to get the opportunity to has just been announced as well. Um, Andy Circus. Yeah, he's going to be at Comic Con Scotland. Um, so so what? So if you're taking something to get signed by Andy Circus, what are you going to get signed though? You know what it is, right? If I get anything signed, it's usually in April ten, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but my favorite thing to do because I'm not, I, I'm not massively bothered about guests. Mm. Guests for me, like going to certain conventions now, it's great that they get the guests. I love that they get the guests. People mm -hmm. go for the guests. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um. But we have our sort of circle of friends, sort of we all go and meet there and the guests happen to mm -hmm. turn up. There's yeah. Yeah. like a little, little sort of collection of us <laughs> like that. My favourite thing is to watch people, meet people. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Um, Horicon UK, fortunate enough to like work the queues. Mm -hmm. um, and just watching, and I'll advise any organiser to do it for five minutes, stand on that exit queue. Okay, mm -hmm. If you've got any doubt away. about yes. what you do, Mm -hmm. Watch that execute. Um, I've got a friend. Uh, she's got uh, a YouTube channel, Lou uh, Lou yeah. Jones. She's um, she went along to do some stuff for our vlog. Me and her got talking in the queue, and we're like, and it's things about you can see the excitement, you what they're mm -hmm. gonna see, and blah blah blah, and um, you know, all what you brought be signed and things like. That. And you watch them, and then you watch them come off the execute, and they're like, look, look, this. So mm -hmm. I was excited to get. Do you mind if I have a look? You know, because you <laughs> see what you got saying. What did you say to them? He was really nice, mm -hmm. and it's just having that, even if it's just for two minutes. Mm -hmm. Going back, to even the Gabriel, the Gabriel Luna, when we'd met him, mm -hmm. um, we walked away, and there was a last day she was on her own. She was mm -hmm. waiting next to meet him. And as we were like getting the thing and we're like paying for our autographs and stuff, as I turned round, he, he put his arms out to give her a mm -hmm. hug, like offered her a hug and you know, waited mm -hmm. for her to make the first move, sort of thing. And she had nobody to tell, but I was right there. Mm -hmm. So just to see that, and she got to share it with at least somebody. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Are you feeling all right? Because I want to take, take me over my hairdress. I doesn't say I want me hair that color. Cause she was like a Billy Chevy and she was absolutely yeah. pleased. Um, just seeing that yeah. is my drug of choice. Mm. No, that's that's really nice as well. Cause I know um, I love that. I, um, one of me, one of our friends, Lee, who came with us uh, to the the the, the northeast one, the Newcastle one, not too long, uh, long and he, he had a similar experience. He paid to get, um, well, he thought he paid to get his photograph with James Masters, but he just mm. paid for this uh, autograph. And he said to James, he went, "Oh, I'm, I'm really sorry. I can say I, I I made a mistake. I thought I paid for the photograph, but like, I'm happy to get you to sign something." And James just like took his mask off and went, "Oh, come here." Now. 
uh, give um, like say one of the guys who's working trying to take a picture of us. So he got like a camera picture of him, and Lee was out of the moon because um, like bless him, he's not the most confident of the lads as well. So he wouldn't be the one that like kicked up a fuss, but it was kind of like no, I, 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 I fucked up. But he was like, he, he, James didn't have to do that though. He could have just went, oh, he just went, signed it. But um, it's always nice when you hear good things and stuff. I know if you ever want to see someone completely lose it and freak out, if you see me meet Sean Aston, now that would be something. Because um, I would tell him, I don't want to talk about Lord of the Rings. Fuck Lord of the Rings. I don't want to talk about strange things. Just tell me about the Goonies. <laughs> See, that's where me and him differ. Yes. <laughs> I don't like the Goonies. No, she does. This is all I talk about. I love about. the Goonies, <laughs> but I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan as well. Mm-hmm. And he's all he always says, Well, if we ever dream me dream guest, it'd be Sean Aston and we wouldn't be talking about the uh, Lord of the Rings. I said, oh, excuse me. I'd be a timeshare on Sean Aston here. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to bring Stranger Things in as well, though. Kind of, but I, I wouldn't so, be yes. that interested. I, I love Stranger Things, but it is one hundred percent all about the Goonies. <laughs> that, that Goonies <laughs> is life. It is. Like, it like is. Say, um one of your friends, Dave Dent, uh, we just talk about the Goonies like like just on things. Uh, we did an episode I think it's the only episode he actually watched us from start to finish as well, uh, was when we did the Goonies episode, where literally me and Sam sat and basically described scene by scene of what the, happens the in thing. the Goonies. Um, that was a good day, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I do that for Red Dwarf, I'm just saying I might be available. Well, like I say, we always like to revisit things as well. I though. I think there's, um, there's only so much you can talk about in the times that never we do watch, as well. Never watch Red Dwarf with Curry. <laughs> Perry, I, think me and you should just, I, I think me and you should just reenact each scene and just put them out each week for everyone because I can do exactly the same up to a certain point and oh, then no, lose me. all the way through this one mm-hmm. well I get to the when you get to the new Kachansky and I kind of drop off for a bit right. um, but yeah but, it's up not until that, then, that, but that was never Kachansky's that, that the thing fault it was just because it, it always, always going to go I... down if you don't have Chris Barry in balls but that, that was always the yeah. issue yeah but I can always revisit it because when we finished, I was like, oh, we forgot to talk about this and we forgot to talk about that. So there's, like, there's so much we can talk about it. So I would love to revisit it with you one day. Right. It'd be so Classic much fun. <laughs> so so you, clearly, as you said, you're horror fans as well. I know, like I say, we're, like, say at the end, we're going to test you, not test you, just give, give you a little bit of a it's hard a, time a as well. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not that. I'm but um, but is there any type of horror that is it all horror you like, or is it just certain aspects, or is it just basically is it or niche something, horror, or is it, or is it like, something that's off the table? Is there anything off the table for you? There's so. nothing off the table for me. Mm. I don't like extreme, like mm, um, <laughs> like kind of a Holocaust. I got mm. nope. through that. ten minutes in, do. that was turned straight off. I don't know yeah, what I was I thinking. Do. I don't do I, cannibals. <laughs> yeah, I I did part way through until I had the pregnant woman I went please tell me this baby's fine and he told us otherwise and I was like and I am out yeah I am nope. done anything that involves babies things like that mm. I'm just that I'm not no it's not your bag but having having said that I mean there's there's not just that there's poltergeist poltergeist I should never have watched I was too young to say that that's, that's mm-hmm. a big no-no off me I re- revisited it recently in recent years and I was still Traumatized there. Wow! <laughs> Put into my shoulders. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't understand that. I was I was nine. I should never have no, watched it. No. But having said that, right, one of the other most terrifying films I ever watched around about the same time, and I still can't revisit, is a Disney film. No business being a Disney film. <laughs> I know what you want to say. It's a Disney film called Watcher in the Woods. Right. Right. Betty Davis is in it. Sounds. No bit- business being any kind of Disney film at all. Disney Plus. Disney no, the Dark is. That's all I'm doing. Oh, no. no. Not right. Plus. Not right. They have mm. not put it on Disney Plus. Disney's gone dark. Yes. Oh my dude, just do not. Don't it's only a PG, mm. but it's classed as a horror film. It's What's in that though? It's, it's, it's some PG films that are terrifying. If you go back to the Roald Dahl witches, that is one of the scariest okay. films ever ever made. Back. Um, For me, it's things that you. It's people who are behind people and they don't know they're there. That fucks mm. me up, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and. So never, He's never hide behind saying, Curry. So never we're going to we'll end this. Seriously, it'll be the final thing you ever do when I turn around because your head's coming off. And I'm sorry. Okay, I'm saying that. And she does carry an axe around with her time. No, <laughs> yeah, your ankles, your ankles will be shattered at that yeah. moment from the neck down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but there's, there's that and anything like like that's why I don't like poltergeist because you can't physically see something to fight. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Well, yeah, I was going to say that's another one of your favorite films. Nothing happens in. Yeah. 
well, I might not say in case he comes out in your top five. Oh, oh. see, oh. they're play, playing the long game now. Yeah. That's it. See, he's, he's a crafty one. But no, um, I, I get it. I'll have like, to remind my, what it is like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but mine is, uh, I'm not very good with torture porn or anything like grotesquely violent or bloody and stuff like that. Like the terrifiers, I still don't understand what's going on in their movies. I, I love the terrifier films. Terrifiers. Love them. I still don't understand oh, what is, what happens in them. It's just He told mental. me not to watch the second one, so I didn't. Oh, the second one was ter- <laughs> like, I actually just was like looking at the screen going, this is just getting more and more crazy, but yeah. I love um, the second one. I love the craziness of it. The madder it got, the more mm. the fever dream it became, I was more into it. And I can't wait to make the guests in for the mm. horror. Mm. Got the yes, horror. He's, got, yes. he's been in full costume as well, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amazing, so, amazing. Last, last year they had um, David Howell Thornton mm-hmm. as art, mm-hmm. and this year they've got... I'll tell you what, even though of makeup going to do that <laughs> well funnily yeah, enough I was speaking to you I've got a picture of um, fish or made fish uh, I fish. know fish fish <laughs> class sorry he's one of my he's, uh, one of, he's like a friend of a friend but I do know him very well <laughs> yeah fish is class absolutely um, amazing I got a, a picture of art of mm-hmm. fish and actually took it over and got um, David Howell Thornton to sign it and mm-hmm. I was talking to him as he was doing it and I says I said, the scariest thing about art is that he never speaks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said, and it's it's just, and he just turned and went, it's, the one that got me was, he does that. Mm-hmm. And he did that. And I swear it was like, oh, oh chills. Switched it on. That's it. And you can switch it on. He's the sweetest man. <laughs> I'll tell you what's man as well, unexpectedly, John Jarrett. Right. John Jarrett, who plays Mick Taylor in Wolf Creek. Oh, right, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. He, yeah. Can, he, he can turn into Mick Taylor mm-hmm. with, within... Oh, that, with, I will shit myself. Uh, and <laughs> scared. But he just pulls that laugh out like that. And, yeah. and he will. Mm-hmm. Anybody that goes up to get something signed, if you get Wolf Creek stuff signed, he mm-hmm. will just turn it on. Yeah. And he is... It's not family-friendly when anywhere no. near him because he just <laughs> goes off on one and he is... Terrifying! It's brilliant yeah. to watch because mm-hmm. it's like watching Wolf Creek like, in real life, and, which which you never really wanted to do. In no. let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. so yeah, I would take you not a fan of Wolf Creek. Then. No, that is it, it's very bloody, but it's more psychological. It's that like thing. Uh, the latest sequels went a bit daft when he's like like nailing people to chairs and and taking people's kneecaps off and stuff like that. I did like the TV show. The TV show was very well done, I thought. I think it was about six or eight episodes, wasn't it? Because it went, didn't uh, go all American. It didn't go all American. No, it was it twenty-four episodes or something like that. So no, I think it was only. I think it was only six in the first season. Hmm. Did it get a second season? I can't even remember. I can't remember, but I remember I really enjoyed the the TV show. If anyone's watching, the Wolf Creek TV show is actually fantastic and very good a suspenseful horror. Oh, I've not. I've not seen it. My my thing is cannibals. Yeah. Don't do cannibals. Even though, even though, Signs of the Lambs, one of my favourite films ever, <laughs> along with the book. Yep, don't, yep. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, no. well, I Something warped. I know, I know, I know. You have yeah. your reasons, I guess. I'm going to like I really do. That. I really do. I had, the, I've, there's only t- been two times in my life I've been scared by horror. The first being the first encounter with Dolly Dearest. She can go and jump in the fucking sea. Um, mm-hmm. But the second one was when I was 10 years older to sleep over and my friends whose house were at, his dad was watching Silence of the Lambs. And I was very intrigued. And I said, oh, that's, and he goes, I said, oh, who's that? And he went, Hannibal the Cannibal. And I went, 10 year old, what's a cannibal? And he, <laughs> he fucking answered, didn't he? And he told us, <laughs> and I went, I was that scared of the idea that somebody could do that to another person. I got a trap nerve in my leg. <laughs> I was shit. I've never known somebody have an actual physical reaction like that. Yeah, I was so, so scared of it. But as with Dolly Dearest, when I realised now was happening, now it happened, you know, Mm. I survived, it's okay, I kind of, I get over me fear quite quickly. Um, Mm -hmm. For all it does churn my stomach and make me go quite grey, I will still watch Silence of the Lambs Mm -hmm. all the time. But yeah, cannibals really... Nope. <laughs> Honestly, I, t- I tried. I-, I tried to brave it with um, Cannibal Holocaust. I really did try. Hold it was on, ten hold minute. On. Hold on. So, of all of the films <laughs> you tried to brave it, you picked the one that's still banned in about thirty countries. Yeah, yeah. I thought. I, 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 thought about, I, I think it's out here, but it's about twenty minutes still uh, not 
Not in the UK version. Depends I think. which version I, you get. I, I, I it can't it's get what, the fully it's what version. Was ever, no, it's... whatever was streaming at the time. Um, <laughs> but I, I, yeah, yeah, I got ten minutes in. I went. Oh, I can't do this. I could, I could feel myself going cold inside. And then mm-hmm. I was like, nah, I can't do this. I can't do this to myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ruin like the next few days of my life. We'll just leave it. They, my oh, wife, goodness. my wife is like say the all sweetness and light when you meet her, but she Very loves much. the darkest and the most deprived horrors that you can think. She loves like switchblade uh, romance, uh, uh, Eden Lake and stuff like that. She'll watch them and Eden just absolutely uh, like and um, she was like, "Oh, let's put um, what was it, toolbox murders?" I was like, "Fuck off!" Um, <laughs> I love your wife so much. <laughs> um, she, like because she like she's very into psychology, like you say. It's there's counseling like uh, courses and stuff like that so she, she gets behind the mentality and fi- like the physical like thoughts behind it but i'm going no i don't like this but that, saying that though when i watched jaws as a kid i stayed out of the sea because i lived near roca for about 10 years from growing up so i was thinking jaws was still going to come and get us because i watched jaws oh, yeah, i was terrified of going to the toilet after that film. <laughs> <laughs> you all watched jaws too young none mm-hmm. of us want to swim afterwards no <laughs> I think it was Jaws. Was it Jaws too as well? When because with Roker like beach, you've got the like the main beach, but then you've got the like the two little with the piers. Yeah. You got the little yeah. thing, and when the shark goes into the what they call like the little bay, and when the kids are playing, that fucked me up so much. <laughs> well, funny enough, we've been down uh, just a, a little aside of that. We've been down Roker, and it was there for a. We did a late night barbecue. <laughs> right. Oh, we did a late night barbecue. What about good it was, friends? It was. A, it was <laughs> Like, a bunch of people have come over from Bishop. We've gone down to the fair and then we've gone down to Roger. Took some disposable barbecues, cleaned up after ourselves because we are responsible adults. <laughs> and then some of them some of them wanted to go for a little late night paddle. So mm-hmm. off the tootles down there, Mike went down and one of the guys that he went with uh, had a nickname of Loco. Okay, right. that was his nickname. This is the same <laughs> lad that walked in to a pub one night and went, how are you doing, Loki? He went, class, I've just glassed someone. So that's oh. the kind of personality we're talking oh. about. Wow. Lovely lad. <laughs> walked yeah. down to the edge and Mike went, you're not getting in late? He went, nah, because somewhere oh, out there is a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> On Roga Beach, somewhere out there, is a dolphin, and apparently he was traumatised going swimming with dolphins with his grandparents at one point. Yeah, so. he thought it was a good idea to take him swim with dolphins. He already had the fear at the time. <laughs> Just trying and to break the cycle. And he looks yeah. terrified. <laughs> somewhere out there is a dolphin. I want it tattooed somewhere because it's just one of the Oh, get a t shirt and needs a t shirt made. Yeah. This, somewhere this is, out this there is, the is a dolphin. Who's got a pot of tea tattooed on one leg and a slice of toast tattooed on his other leg? Why? Because who doesn't like tea and toast? toast right? Who doesn't like tea and toast? I love tea and right. toast. And you know it's what? the best. You can't argue with it. No. no. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> who doesn't like tea and toast? Certainly. So. <laughs> I'm going to ask the question now. So, who wants to go first? So, we'll do the top you five. First. So, well, I'll be nice. I'll go top five horror, horror films. And... You first, Al. Top five. Does it have to be in any particular order? No, no, no order. Would like say no because that's too okay, hard. Okay, right. Um, I'm going to go with Misery first mm-hmm. off. Okay, yeah. classic. Um, um, I love The Descent. It's, okay. it's, it's a good because movie, but I can't watch it. It's horrifying. Because I can't, I, I don't do claustrophobia. We've been on, like, on a ghost hunt at Chillingham Castle before, and I couldn't get down one of the corridors because it was like that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my hips are getting wedged in that, and there's going to be a whole Winnie the Pooh going into Rabbit's House <laughs> thing going on there. We don't need no. that. No. <laughs> <laughs> now everyone's getting the visual thing of like, the, the, the Winnie the Pooh's uh, stuck in the tree. Um, <laughs> Christopher Robinson, pull us out. But yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> The Haunting 1963 version, we don't talk about the other version. That didn't mm-hmm. happen. Again, things you can't see. That Nothing's was, seen. That was yeah. the film I was expecting. Uh, the Haunting 1963, absolutely just, mm-hmm. that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> that's not... <laughs> just not right. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that as a tagline on one of Monsters. That's not right. <laughs> just not right. It's not right. It's not right. Um, another two, another two, another two. What ones do I keep going back to? Oh, right, okay, not a film, mm-hmm. um, but I'm a massive fan of the Dragula series. Right. I don't know if you've was, watched the Dragula series with the Blue Brothers. The, was that the BBC one that came out? Or... No, it's on oh. Shudder. It was Dragula. Dragula. 
Oh, Dragula. It's, uh, sorry. It's like yes, the, the, the drag race. It's drag race yes, with the uh, goth version, isn't it? Yes. It, it's, it's horror. Most, it's brilliant. Absolutely and it's the most brilliant. bitchiest queens you have ever come across. They are fucking oh, they, brutal they to are each other. Bitchy. Oh, they are awful to each other. But it's amazing to watch. It is the, the talent that goes behind them is great. So yeah. I'm going to have that one as a, okay, it's not a film, but, you know. We'll let you have it. That's fine. We're not that many. <laughs> <laughs> um, and finally, I'm just going to group together the um, Universal Horrors because they're mm. ones that I'm currently introducing my grandkids to as well. So, so which one are you enjoying? Because we've like done a few of the Universal Horrors and we, we had our Universal Horror episode where we talked about them. And you don't realise how fucking creepy and like say some of the ones like the Wolfman, the Wolfman, Larry, Larry Larry the Lurker. The the Wolfman was the one that Harry asked for to watch first. Yeah, when he was two or three. When he was three, yeah. When he was three, he wanted to watch the Wolfman. Mm -hmm. Universal. Yeah, it's a you. It's still a you, even though it's. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, we can watch it. There's a ten year old kid along the street as well, and every now and then, horror daft. Bring him in, and we're taking him through the. The universal ones, so yeah, that's oh, that's great. Great. Yeah. If, which one that will go next? <laughs> well, well, before I started doing monsters, uh, monster podcast, if you did ask us what's my favorite monster, like of all type creature, I love creature and I still do, but because I'm really having to watch these movies, I properly watch them. I have found such a massive respect for Wolfman, a uh, huge Lon Chaney Jr. fan, and um. The Invisible Man, like Claude Rains, is just becoming. Mm-hmm. Phantom oh, of the God. Opera can get in the bin. His version of Phantom of the Opera, because my God, that is horrific. Um, <laughs> but his Invisible Man is mm-hmm. amazing, and our episode on monsters for Invisible Man was one of the funniest things I've ever done. Imagine we were setting up before we started to go live, and we've got everyone ready to go, and then Graham, like I say, he's. Off his rocker anyway, but he's like I said, him and Goodwill's probably just wrapping up the trekking podcast now. Um mm-hmm. he just started looking up, looked away and he picked something up and we like, what's he doing? He stopped wrapping his head around in toilet roll. And we were toilet like roll. we were like, okay. Puts, puts his sunglasses on, he's got his gloves on, and he just sits there and I waits. Love I love ten him. ten minutes it took us before we could go live, and he's just still sat there completely still, not moving. He looked like the shit. The silhouette of him looked like Terence and Philip. Yeah, from South and then, Park, and I could not get that out of my head. But then, then we started it, and like I said, Sam done done an intro, and I couldn't look at the screen, so I had to look at like the phone. He just start going, "You're mad! You're mad!" Did I say it? You like, fools, proper, and just start ripping it off. <laughs> like proper Claude wow. Rains impression, but it was one of the most interesting openings I have ever seen. But yeah. Um, Brilliant. but the invisible man's just amazing. There's like the lines in it. It's like, uh, I have killed over 150 people, but you never see it. But it's fine. 128. <laughs> 128. He is, hi- he is still, as of right now, he is still our highest kill count person. <laughs> of all yeah. the episodes we've done, Claude Rian still stands above them all with his kill count. Ooh. But you only, you only see, you don't even see any of them on screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll need to see receipts, otherwise it doesn't count. No, there is one yeah. way, like he says, pushes someone over the ledge and someone looks over and he goes, ah, you're looking back, look, you want to die as well, see? And pushes them over. It was just like the most <laughs> comedy death ever and everyone else just scrambled after that. But honestly, Fantastic. one of the funniest things I've ever seen. But yeah, uh, so Mike, you're five now. You said it was easy, so. It is easy. I am mm. going to cheat. Right. Oh. I'm not putting them in any order, but I will give you my top film of all time at the mm-hmm. end. Okay. I'm putting Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein together. Right, okay. Yeah, Because fine. they deserve to go together. But Bride of Frankenstein oh. is batshit crazy. Like, yeah, it's marsupials. It is fun amazing. Fact, fun fact that uh, Bride is Katie Nana in yes. Mary Poppins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, because if it wasn't for Frankenstein, I don't think I'd be into the horror that I am now. Mm. Mm-hmm. Jaws has got to go in the top five. 100%. Because it stands up to date. Oh, and look, look at the fight you're now going to cause in the comments. Jaws oh. stands up to date. <laughs> if anyone dares says Jaws is not horrible, they, they can get fucked. Sorry. Jaws is terrifying. <laughs> that, was the, that was the movie that came out for me when I was born. So there yeah, right. no, Jaws, is, Jaws is legitimately terrifying. Mm-hmm. You're cheating. You're putting TV shows in and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Alien. 
Which again, like we aliens. had an argument. We had an argument before because someone said, no, "Alien's not a horror." I went, "Alien is a horror." It was me. It was me. <laughs> aliens is an action film. It was me and you. Alien is a haunted house film. Yeah, it's okay. it's basically a, a monster. For, it's a, like say a monster. It's exactly like say a werewolf or a horror. Or something it's, coming it's to get you, but it's set in space. Basically. I yeah. I have yeah. changed my opinion since. I've made that statement, um, and I did a full episode on it. And fuck me, I the what I learned out of that move, out of that whole franchise was just it, I've got a huge found like new respect for it. The first oh, yeah. film is terrifying, but even now it's still scary. Yeah, um, that bit where you just don't see her. Mm-hmm. My until fa- she moves. My favorite <laughs> bit is um, when Dallas is in the um, ducts mm-hmm. and Ripley is shouting. It's right on top of you. It's right on top of you. And he's mm-hmm. just looking and he turns round. Mm-hmm. And as he turns round, you see the alien has been sat behind him just like the whole that. time. Mm-hmm. For a good two minutes, it's been sat there in the dark. When mm-hmm. you said it's yeah, when you said it's above just, you, I was actually gonna look just up. When he turns <laughs> ra- just when he turns round and the flame just catches and it just and you realise mm-hmm. balls, it's been there all the time. Yeah, I mean <laughs> I've seen alien. Amazing. A hundred times, but I obviously with the podcast I'm doing, I have I'm watching, watching now, like pr- like no phones, really paying attention to it. And at the end, when it's in the corner, mm-hmm. and you, everything's like all quiet, and she's stripping yeah. off, and Sigourney Weaver's showing that amazing body off, and it's there, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I that's what I'm saying. That should be. I can see you, bitch. <laughs> 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 I am like freaking out. Like, how have I not noticed that before? Yeah. It's because I have and, to pay attention. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing is, you know it's coming. But until mm-hmm. you know it's coming, you didn't mm-hmm. see it coming at all. No. The next film on my list is a bizarre one for me. Mm-hmm. Friday the 13th, part six. Is that the Goonie oh. one? Is that the one with... No, it wasn't. Part Which six one? is part six. Um, Jason Lives. It's the one oh, where right. he's dead. But he's dead in part four. Mm-hmm. And he gets brought back by Tommy at the start. Yeah. yeah. Isn't he, he dead? Stab- he stabs him. Mm-hmm. He digs him up, he stabs him, and then struck by lightning, he comes out of the ground. <gasps> That's yeah. right. Yes. And it's the best Friday the 13th film by I see, Henry Miles. It's awesome. I've got a soft spot for Manhattan. Jason takes Manhattan. That, that, for see, some Manhattan's reason. Manhattan's too comedy. Mm. But part six is... Part six, Alice Cooper puts two, two songs in for yes. it. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. I know... Um, was it, which one was it? Because I, I didn't realise it had um, Corey Filman in. Was it number three? Part four. Part four, yeah. He's in part four. He, yeah. In fact, he plays the young Tommy Jarvis, who's then played by Tom Matthews in part five and six. Yeah. Because, mm. so, yeah, um, when we talked about the, the Friday the 13th franchise, we were calling that one the Goonie episode. Yeah, the, Goonie, so it's the Goonie movie. <laughs> <laughs> and not only is it my favourite horror film of all time, mm-hmm. it's my favourite film of all time. Mm-hmm. There is only one perfect film mm-hmm. with no flaws, Mm-hmm. It's John Carpenter's 982, The Thing. The Thing. So the remake for the... the, the, was, the was remake original, of yeah. um, how, uh, Howard Carter? No. No, he's too no, common. He's too <laughs> common. <laughs> no. The dude yeah. who was obsessed with uh, putting his feet in... In Quentin Tarantino? Putting his oh. feet in uh, <laughs> tissue boxes. Uh, I remember... The, 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 when we when we do talk about the thing, like like especially eighties horrors as well, the thing comes up so much. Um, but I, I didn't appreciate it when I was younger when I watched it because no, I watched it when yeah. I was young. I was like, this is I think it was too clever. But when you get the thought behind, like, and Kurt Russell is absolutely fucking amazing in that movie. Like, yeah, to be fair, beautiful. let's let's be honest. Did has he done a bad film? Captain Ron, maybe. No, he's still good in Captain Ron. But uh, um, but yeah, the thing. Mm. Yeah, he's amazing. But the thing blew blew me away now. Where as an adult, when I watch it, you get the nuances, you get all yeah. the little like the hidden things, and like why it's, it's so amazing. scary as well. If any of those at the start could speak Norwegian, that would have mm-hmm. been the shortest film ever. <laughs> <laughs> because he couldn't. Yeah. It's we just... got what we got. <laughs> and, and I love uh-huh. it as well. That it's been copied so many times by sci-fi. Like, like the X Files done it really well, but it's always like using the same premise, and it works in every situation it's done. Yeah, it's the unknown. It's mm-hmm. the it's the not known which ones which. And even now, with the like even today, you mm-hmm. can still have the debate: is Childs or mm-hmm. McCready 
an alien at the end. Yeah, because you never know. And if, if John Carpenter's come out and said, one of them is. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a dick. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just chuck that one in there. <laughs> That's the thing. It's one of them ones where you don't want a sequel to it as well. You just wanted to leave him like that. Yeah, yeah, leave it alone. He did a really good sequel in the comics. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. Oh. The comics, they, they did a sequel in the comics, and the comics turned out um, that McCready had, did both fall asleep like mm-hmm. they're going to, mm-hmm. and McCready gets rescued, mm-hmm. and Childs isn't there. Mm-hmm. But it turns out Childs had got rescued first. Right. And Childs was, Ch- Childs was an alien in the comic. Mm-hmm. Mm. But he, he, he fools McCready into doing another blood test. Yeah. Where McCready fails his own blood test. Right. But he fails it because he puts his thumb in. When the ah. bastard. metal goes in. So it's his blood that's in, the, in with McCready's. Ah, yes. very clever. But I, and I love... Yeah, but I love the thing just because of the practical effects as well. Um, yeah. Like, the, like we have this discussion so much, like on the podcast, how we are big fans of practical effects over CGI. Massively. And I know they remade it not too long ago as well. It was still okay. It wasn't as like up there or anywhere near. But yeah, you know what's annoying? They actually mm-hmm. did it. It's not. It's a prequel because mm-hmm. it's set at the same time. Well, it's slightly before. The mm-hmm. second film, but it ends just slightly after it. The yeah. start, the, it's it ends after the first film starts, but annoyingly, it's called the same name. Yeah, I don't know why they changed <laughs> it. The same name. Um, but it was done with practical effects, mm-hmm. and then they changed it to CGI because mm-hmm. they didn't like the way the practical effects looked. And I'm like, but you've now ruined it mm-hmm. By because the there CGI. is a place. For CGI, if it's oh yeah, absolutely CGI, it's brilliant. Yeah. If it's if it's used with practical effects, it can be used. I wish they wouldn't go so much with the blood. Mm-hmm. I prefer blood to be more practical, and I understand mm-hmm. why they do it because it's you don't have to clean it up. Yeah. You don't have to worry about actors getting it on the clothes. <laughs> if it's CGI. Oh no. Mm-hmm. You don't yeah. Have, mm-hmm. All your washing bills go down. <laughs> I love the fact that there's a in Shaun of the Dead when Shaun has the arrow in his head and they pull it out, the blood that spurts out is CGI. Yeah. <laughs> <In> the, dart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. the dart, yeah, the dart, yeah. When they pull it out, that is CGI. And I was like, of all the things in that movie that CGI, it's that blood splatter right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll see I've I don't understand why why they never get the colour right. Mm. They've never got the colour right on CGI blood. No. It's either no. too dark or too bright. Yeah, but like I say, with a lot of blood as well, though, like when you look at it, because um, my wife used to work, well, she used to work in the ambulances as well, so every time she sees it, she goes, oh, that's not right. Like, she laughs at the screen, <laughs> she, she laughs at the screen movie so badly as well, and it's like, yeah, that wouldn't be looking at like that right now and stuff like that, so it's just terrible to, to watch things with, because she can't, like, as we, we describe it uh, on the podcast, movie magic. She movie goes, magic. She, she, she can't get that. She goes, well, that didn't happen. This wouldn't happen. So it's just like... Yeah. I just, if anyone questions anything, the first thing I say is just movie magic. <laughs> That's it. Isn't that it. intellectual? Just say, bit old breaks, darling. Bit old breaks. Especially ninety <laughs> <laughs> percent of the time, I can do it. Mm-hmm. But there are some films where I just can't. Mm-hmm. A lot yeah. of films you just can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you mentioned earlier Carrie's favorite film, and you didn't want to see it. The Haunt. The oh, the haunting, right? Okay. No, I wasn't going to say it, but I want to give a couple of underrated ones a shout. Mm-hmm. Um, that a lot of people that they should have seen and they haven't. Um, so there's a one called Lake Mungo. Mm-hmm. It's on Shudder at the moment. Which is, uh, yeah, it's on Shudder, and it is an Australian mockumentary style mm-hmm. um, about a lass that drowns. They go on mm-hmm. holiday, she, she drowns in the lake, and it's about the story leading up to that. Mm-hmm. It is the house was haunted. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. It is brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um not gonna say too much for spoilers and stuff. That's why the documentarians in. That was honestly, the start of the film, it tells you. <laughs> honestly, watch it mm-hmm. and then watch it again. Right. Yeah, I'll do it. Watch the it the second time. Take. The second time through is the one that really freaked me out. Right. I don't get freaked out of films very often. Lake Mungo really freaked me out. Is it like Last House on Haunted no, House on the Hill or something? Not, like that? It's, it's, yeah. Do you know what? It's not. It's not gory. 
it's not there's no real jump scares in it mm. oh that's there's good no <laughs> it's it's it is a talking heads documentary for most of it right with, oh i love um, stuff like that with, mm. with um home video footage Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you're parents, just talking my language now. <laughs> the parents have just done home videos of the house. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And that's where it's set up. And mm -hmm. that's where we'll leave it because we don't want to spoil <laughs> Oh, anything. no, you, talk, you are talking my language. Found footage um, horror is some of my favourite horror of all time. So it kind of like. Are you looking forward to seeing the Blair Witch lot this Absolutely. year? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so Lake Mungo, please look that one up. There's another one called Pontypool. Right. I think um, I've heard of Pondypool. I, I think I've heard it's of a different, It's a different take on the um, infection movie mm -hmm. slash zombie movie, whatever you want to call them. It's not a zombie movie, it's an infection movie to me, but we're not going into that here right now. Um, <laughs> but it's a different take on it. And mm. I don't want to, again, I'm not going to say anything more than that. It's, it's an infection movie. How it goes about is brilliant. Mm -hmm. It all takes place in a um, radio studio. Yeah, mm -hmm. the main character is a DJ. Yeah, and it right. is. And he's just it is on air such a great on. take mm. on how the infection passes. It mm -hmm. is brilliant. It really is good. Cool. So look for those two. Great. I just no. wrote them down. <laughs> <laughs> but I just got that late one goes, Sammy. Please, uh, please, please. Sammy, please. Give us a shout after you've watched it. Sammy, we'll do. Like, um, found footage films. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You like extreme horror? There's a Mexican yeah. film called Atroz. A-T-R-O-Z. Hang on, dyslexic brain here. A-T-R-O-Z. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. Got Otherwise it. Otherwise known as atrocious. I'll oh. warn you now, it's not uh -huh. easy watch. Okay. It's, it's, okay. It is very mm -hmm. graphic and extreme. I'm good, and I'm good with stuff like that. But I, I see fan it's, footage is it's, just... It's on a par with the August Underground films. Right. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll give it a watch. I'm not scared. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stay far away from it. It sounds horrific. Oh, I'm not scared. The Poughkeepsie Tapes, <laughs> which is yeah. actually on Amazon. Right. Right, right. It's on Freebie. I am mm -hmm. the only th it's on Freebie. Yeah, I found a few things. I found a few things on there. Mm -hmm. I'll watch it with adverts. It means that I get to watch it. That's brilliant. Um, I've, got a, I've got a thing at the moment that I never used to have before, but jump scares get us. Like, uh, like badly. Um, Conjuring 2, scream the, scream the cinema down. Literally screamed, <laughs> oh. and I said to him, I was going to see Evil Dead Rise, and I was do I was going oh, by myself. Evil Dead Rise. Oh, I loved it so much. It's like my favorite film of this year. Um, and I, he been to see it before, us, and I said, "Listen, I'm going by myself. I need to know if there's any jump scares because, like, I'm I don't need to draw luckily, any I, more Luckily, I've seen it before, her, so I did <laughs> yeah. give her a warning. So I was like, I, I don't need <laughs> to draw any more yes. attention to myself. <laughs> no, there like, wasn't any. No, no, I, I don't no, think no, there was jump scares in this. It wasn't very many jump scares in it. It was just very was brutal not, and no. very direct with like the other stuff. But yeah, I, I, it's nice when they do a horror film where it's just simple and don't over exaggerate and make it too complicated. Yeah, but I, I found it quite fun. That. And I questioned myself a lot with mm. Alyssa Sutherland when she's a dead eyed. I was like. Should I be feeling this way? I don't know. I really yeah. don't know, but I loved it. Actually. Yes. yes. Oh, I screamed that. Sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I've I've said, um, because I'm a big Freddy cat when it comes to celebrities and going to see them, but I really need to meet her. I really mm. need to. I'm a, a huge fan of Vikings. I, I know that she, she took over Lagatha's place and we can't forgive her for that, but I mm -hmm. love her. <laughs> in new evil dead rise she she ignited a spark because i evil dead used to be my favorite movies like evil dead 2 was my favorite movie when i was growing up and she ignited a spark for us that i that i needed back and i just mm. oh, i need to meet her need to meet her i'm oh, hoping the steel boat comes but it comes in and time, i'm gonna so brave yeah. it i'm gonna brave it <laughs> but yes um, again i'll be watching you meet her because <laughs> just watching people meet people is my thing <laughs> That doesn't sound <laughs> in a nice way, not in a creepy way. That's what no, no. <laughs> you just just see Carrie standing there going, hey, going hey, She'll be stood with a sledgehammer. man. Now what she's gonna be stood at <laughs> I'd be on the sledgehammer. Right. That's fine. Um so I know you said you wanted to do a few shout outs before as well. So um, just and like obviously a big hello to every all the inmates and everybody in the nerdy up north community. Um Big shout out to Ivan Bird, who I know listens to the podcast. Um, he has not been very well lately. He's a work friend of mine as well. So uh, just a big shout out to him. Please get well soon. Uh, mm -hmm. Look forward to annoying you back at work. Yay! <laughs> very nice. And, <laughs> and like I said before, shout out. 
Mm-hmm. We've got a horror wing of the Geek Asylum called oh, the, horror the Horror Asylum. asylum. The Horror Asylum. <laughs> I, I did not know this. Every day in the Horror Asylum, and I mm-hmm. have done for about three and a half years now, there's over a thousand reviews in there of all sorts of films. Spoiler free. Spoiler free. I'm going to check out. I'm crap with Facebook. Like, if, if I only go on because of Nerdy Up North, so I don't really look at anything else, so I, I will well, get we've on. We've only got a thousand <laughs> members. We've got it's, it's only a little group. Mm-hmm. Just under a thousand members. I'm quite happy with just staying there. Nice little niche. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. so, 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 so people do enjoy. <laughs> you want to join? You know? if, yeah. In fact, if you remember the Geek Asylum, you automatically become a member. Just mm-hmm. find the group and stick join it. Let you straight in. Mm-hmm. Awesome beans. I'll do that. Cool. So I yes, we review for night. Went in eight o'clock. It was <laughs> awesome tonight. Uh, awesome. I think, I think the next movie we've got to review is um, what was it? was said it was going to be the Haunted Mansion. The Haunted Mansion, yes. <laughs> we are trying to do some movie reviews at times as well. So, um, the new so, one of the year. The new the, one. The new one. That yeah. we're, we're trying to see movies on release days, like when, <laughs> we're, when we're, we're trying can. to be present. <laughs> we're trying to be present and saying get the movie reviews because we've got all these different ideas and stuff and trying to do and we just don't have the time to do it. But it's just... Yeah, he said so we would have... carve out like at least one movie a month, and unfortunately, Barbie and Oppenheimer have come out a, a, a terrible a weekend for me because I can't yeah. do anything this weekend because yeah. I'm busy. <laughs> do you know what? That's my favorite meme. Mm-hmm. Said, my favorite meme is the Barbie and Oppenheimer one, and it's yes. just literally a picture of Barbie on one side saying how a product was first launched in Japan, and then there's Oppenheimer <laughs> on the other side, just his face looking forward. <laughs> and I'm like, looking, there's no words for that. That is no. perfect. No. <laughs> well, it works. Excellent. It does work. <laughs> That's my humor to tea. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. So, anything else you guys want to plug before we do wrap it up as well? Is there anything he's got planned? Oh, good lord. Right. So, let's go to um, see what's on the Comic Con boards. Um, please just, you know, look for your local Comic Con, support your local events, yeah. get behind them. Um, you know, if you've got join the Geek Asylum, come on, we'll 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 put you in the direction of a load of uh, a load of great events. You know, we've got the likes of mm-hmm. Huddersfield, that's been run by Martin Ballard. Um, Wigan's we've got uh, Wigan, mm-hmm. that's run by Paul Prescott and um, NWCC events. Yeah. Um, obviously Monopoly with the uh, sweeping mm-hmm. the nation right now. From mm-hmm. Aberdeen right the way down to London. <laughs> um, keep an eye Amazing. out on the Monopoly page for all updates on that. Mm-hmm. Um, please go to the uh, BG, the big Glasgow comic Comic Con pages for yeah. all the Scotland mm-hmm. ones up there. Um, Capital Sci-Fi, Capital Sci-Fi in Edinburgh, which is an excellent one. Everything raised goes to children's hospices across Scotland. Amazing. But keep an eye, like I say, come to the Gate Asylum. We've got a big list um, mm-hmm. in the in it's the updated daily. Yeah, but, but it's um, not updated. I need to update it if I'm honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard. I think what the important message with these ones as well. All these conventions that are on the Geek Asylum or that they do advertise are safe events run by yeah. safe people. Yeah. And it's always good to know that because like, yeah, without nasty. saying anything negative or anything, there is ones that to keep an eye on and stay away from as well. But again, that's for another day, another message. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> We have, a, we have an extensive list, so yes. if anybody wants to come over the Geek Asylum, we'll keep it in a pin post. I update it as and when I can. I probably really should this weekend and get on top of that one because we've got some 2024 events to add. Oh, um, mm-hmm. But yeah, just keep an eye on that pages. You know, make sure that you know if you if you want to cosplay, do it. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you're wearing a onesie and a mask or if you spend six months on and welding. If you're having fun, you're doing it right. Exactly. That's that's, that's the main it. thing. It's like yeah. it's a good message to give as well because. I think a lot of people do get disheartened and stuff when they say certain things. And think, I can't do that. It doesn't matter. It's what you feel like in, in that day. And I've also, Meg Griffin is a pink t shirt and a pair of jeans and a wink, you know what I mean? It's, it's dead simple. Maybe simple it. or as difficult uh, as you want it to be. And let's, mm-hmm. let's be honest, there's a lot of people out there that have only fans doing similar things and getting a lot of money doing really that thing as well. So it always does work. Um, <laughs> but yes. And also, like I said, we'll be putting the post in the description for all things we've talked about and also about the charity events and the charity uh, organisations. Like I say, we'll try and help out where we can. But um, it's been an absolute pleasure having you it's on. It's been so thank amazing. You for... Absolutely uh, amazing. Really enjoyed it. No, it's, it's been so much fun. fun. <laughs> and this is what we do, because the, the thing is, I know it sounds silly, we always say this to people afterwards, people do get nervous about coming on, but when uh-huh. they come on, it's so addictive. You think, uh, and the time flows over so quickly. Like, and 
we do get messages saying when can I come back on, when I come back on. We try and get the people on the league, so we will try and get you back on again in the future, hopefully, Absolutely. if that's if you want to come back on. Um, Absolutely, do. We'll bring the other wardens as well. Yeah, just <laughs> um, so I know this will be going out on Sunday. Yes. So this will be going out on Sunday. So on the Monday, there'll be Monster Monday with Sammy and Dan from Blade Marvelous. They'll, we'll be discussing um, the Jigsaw from the Saw movies. No, no, no. no. We, we, it's, it's John Kramer. Jigsaw. All right. <laughs> <laughs> See, I appreciate that. I like that. It's all the way through the episode. <laughs> right. So, yes, they, w- they will be discussing that on Monday. Then on the Friday, there'll be uh, Goodwill and Graham will be back uh, for the Trekking Up North discussing the latest episode of Strange New Worlds. And I'm not a, the biggest Trekkie, but I have to admit that this show is one of the best, not just Star Trek, but TV shows I've seen in a long time. Um, and I believe next Sunday's episode, we are um, having Graham back as well. So it is going to be talking about RuPaul's Drag Race, I believe, or Drag oh Race God, episode, yeah. yes. We're going all we're going all drag. I can't wait. It's gonna be yes. good. So you'll have to put the effort in because I, th- I I think Graham might be actually getting dressed up. So <laughs> oh, I've got to put the effort in. Okay, I can do that. Can we do did that. Uh, like I say, when we did the sun the sunny con, which was hilarious. We went on the main stage. Uh, we all sat down, got everything ready. Not a single peep from the audience. But Graham, come on up in full drag, red uh, Jessica Rabbit dress, walking up on stage. The whole crowd whooping and hollering and cheering. I was like, oh. Why didn't we get that type of? Yeah, um... I know. And then the the <laughs> asshole forgot something, walked back off again, then came back on again and sat down. I was like, "You've done that on purpose." <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, you need a fake beard. I do. Drag king it up. I will. Drag king gonna... it up. I was going to say. Nasty. I was going to say something really mean there, but I thought, no, I'm not going to be nasty to Sammy Bones there. <laughs> Better fucking not. No. <laughs> <laughs> Go and look at a fantastic drag king called London Cider. Mm-hmm. London Cider. London okay. Cider. Mm-hmm. Love they it. They are brilliant drag kings. Oh, I'll give that a look and get some inspiration. All I'm going to say is it'll have you questioning a lot of things. There's, there's been a few things that this year that's made me question <laughs> a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just add that oh, to the list. Honest. I'll be honest, it made me question things, and I'm like, I don't even know what's going on here. This is weird. <laughs> I love it. I don't it. understand but what's all, happening. But it's all right. It's all okay. Everyone's in a safe space, so it's fine. <laughs> We're all good. So, yes. Abelan and Say, that's a great drag king. Do look them up. I will cool. do. Well, like I say, please, like I say, everyone who's joined us or is still in the chat, thank you for staying in the chat. Um, like I say, please like the video, please share the video. And again, like I say, well, thank you for supporting us and thank Harry and Mike for supporting thank us you. by coming on. Thank uh, you. It is a big deal that they are coming on as well, so it means the world to me. So thank you so much for that. Oh, you make me blush. <laughs> it's, it's what I'm good at. But yes, so, um, so stay in bad time, stay in bad channel. Stay nerdy, everyone. Bye. Bye.